Will the meeting please come to order? Will all members of the council, as well as the public, please rise and remain, um, excuse me, please rise for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation this evening will be offered by Councilman Scott Davis. Hold on, Councilman, one moment. One moment, Councilman. There you go. Let us all bow our heads, please. Dear Lord, including myself and all members of this body and all the folks at home, everyone in the audience, Please humble our hearts. Please allow us to speak less and listen more and to do the bidding of the people so we all can be proud of us. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for allowing us to be here today. I want to thank you for the thousands of public servants that this city employs and the hundreds of commissioners that do work for this great city of ours for no pay at all. I want you to wrap your arms around our family members. I want you to wrap your arms around those folks in Texas that had a tragedy earlier this week. I want you to wrap your arms around our neighbors in Antioch for that tragedy weeks ago. And I definitely want you to wrap your arms around those good people in Las Vegas. But Lord, I want to tell you that we thank you for the blessings that we are alive here today that we are in the best city in the world today. Even though tonight we have some difficult decisions to make, please let me do it with a clean heart. Please let everyone in this room come out of here loving each other and being sisters and brothers. Please uplift every woman, man, and child in this city. In your heavenly son's name we pray, amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Without objection, we'll suspend the calling of the roll and ask the clerk to record the names of those members present throughout the meeting. Is there a motion for adoption of the minutes of the meeting of October 13th, 2017? Without objection, those minutes will stand approved as written. Madam Clerk, are there any messages from the mayor? Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, there is a message from the mayor. Dear Vice Mayor Briley and members of the council, please find attached the state of Tennessee reporting form required to be submitted to the local legislative body following a sale of bonds. This report is for the sale of $89,420,000 in water and sewer revenue bonds, series 2017A green bonds, and $155,210,000 in water and sewer revenue bonds, series 2017B, approved by the Metropolitan Council by resolution number RS 2017-902 on October 3rd, 2017. The bonds closed on November 2nd, 2017. The bonds were sold through a negotiated process on October 25th, 2017 at a true interest cost of 3.638173%. As always, we appreciate the Metropolitan Council's support on these important financing initiatives. Sincerely, Mayor Megan Berry. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We do have two presentations. Council Lady Karen Johnson first and others, I believe. I'd like for all members of the Minority Caucus also to please join me. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Flagg, and the entire um, family, Pastor Fuzz, and the Corinthian and Corinthian church family, 
as well as the Lake Providence Church family. Thank you to Council A. Johnson for allowing me to read the first portion of this resolution. This is resolution RS 2017-904. It's a resolution recognizing Mr. Benjamin F. Flagg and Mrs. Genora Flagg for 70 years of marriage, operating a successful... <laughs> And not only that, operating a successful business for over 60 years and for their contributions to the city of Nashville. So, whereas Mr. Benjamin F. Flagg and Mrs. Janora Flagg are highly esteemed citizens of the Nashville community, and whereas Benjamin and Janora grew up in the small town of Nutbush in West Tennessee, yes. Benjamin was drafted to serve in World War II. Yes. He trained at Camp Swift in Texas and at Camp Pork in New York before he was shipped out to England and France to serve his country. He served until the end of the war. After an honorable discharge, Benjamin returned to his hometown, graduating from high school as class president and meeting the love of his life and now devoted wife, Denora. And whereas Benjamin continued his education at Toller's Business College in Paris, Tennessee, and Tennessee State University in Nashville, Tennessee, and whereas Denora is the oldest of 14 siblings, and whereas Denora eventually retired from Meharry Medical Hospital after 45 years, where she served in several positions, including manager of radiology medical records, and whereas Benjamin and Denora continue to celebrate life and love with their two daughters, Janet and Iris. Whereas, Benjamin has continued to work at Flag's Barbershop for over 60 years and owns one of the oldest continually running businesses in South Nashville. And whereas it is fitting and proper that the Metropolitan Council recognizes Mr. Benjamin F. Flagg and Mrs. Janora Flagg upon the celebration of 70 years of marriage and for their many contributions to the city of Nashville. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County, the Metro Council hereby goes on record as recognizing and honoring Mr. Benjamin F. and Mrs. Janora Flagg for 70 years of marriage, operating a successful business for over 60 years, and for their co contributions to the city of Nashville. The Metropolitan Council Office is directed to prepare a copy of this resolution to be presented to Mr. and Mrs. Benjamin F. Flagg. This resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption, the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. Introduced by the entire Metro City Council and our Vice Mayor, David Browley. And they also were able to take a photo with our Mayor, Megan Berry. Thank you. One of their daughters is coming to say just a few words on their behalf. <laughs> uh, this is kind of impromptu, but I can speak for mom and dad both and um, for to express their gratitude, our gratitude for this recognition. This means an awful lot to both of them, I'm sure. And Dad and Mom have been a mentors to so many in the community and at the church that, well, where they served, have served for 
gosh, since I was two years old, so that makes me pretty old. Um, but that's been over, that's been over 67, almost 70 years at Corinthian. Yes, yes indeed. But thank you so much, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll treasure this plaque and display it proudly at our, in their home. Thank you. Councilman Withers, if you'd make your way on over. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you, everyone, for your attendance tonight. Um, I was uh, contacted uh, by some residents in the, in the county uh, about um, bringing some awareness to uh, men's health issues. There's a, a foundation and an event that's called Movember, which encourages men to grow mustaches and facial, facial hair in the month of uh, November in order to raise awareness about men's health issues. And I have no idea why they contacted me, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. You got it, you got it. So, um, I'll go ahead and uh, present the resolution. I actually have some guests who uh, are trying to make their way in but aren't quite here yet, but just wanted to read the resolution and give a little bit of background information and let you all speak for just a couple minutes if you'd like to. So this is resolution number RS 2017-935. It is a resolution recognizing the month of November 2017 as Movember in Nashville in order to raise public awareness for men's health issues. And it says, Whereas Movember is a men's health initiative created to raise awareness for men's health concerns with a goal to change the face of men's health, and whereas the average life expectancy of men in the United States is almost five years less than women, furthermore, 12.1% of men 18 years and older are in fair or poor health, and one in two men will be diagnosed with cancer within their lifetime. And whereas there are about 8,850 new cases of testicular cancer diagnosed each year and approximately 161,360 new cases of prostate cancer in 2017 in the United States alone. And whereas Movember started in 2003 in Melbourne, Australia, and is observed around the world every November 1st through 30th with campaigns in 21 countries encouraging men to grow mustaches to spark conversations regarding men's health issues. And whereas the Movember Foundation has raised $769 million, helped fund more than 1,200 breakthrough men's health projects in 21 countries, and in the United States in 2016, more than 84,000 
1,398 people participated in Movember, and maybe we'll have some more next year, uh, and raised over 17.4 million. Whereas the Movember Foundation is the only global charity focused solely on men's health and the objective of helping men live happier, healthier, longer lives through investments in key areas of men's well-being. And whereas the Metropolitan Council supports the Movember movement and strives to break stigma surrounding men's physical and mental health issues by increasing public awareness in Nashville during the month of November. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County that the Metropolitan Council hereby goes on record as recognizing Movember in Nashville for the month of November 2017. And this resolution shall take effect from and after its adoption the welfare of the Metropolitan Government of Nashville and Davidson County requiring it. I'd like to turn it over. To Thank speakers. you. Thank you very much. I am uh, Blake McDaniel. These are my compadres, Brian Hill and Joseph Martin from Creative Artist Agency. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, for this resolution. Movember is about a conversation. Um, I originally wanted to rename Nashville to Stashville, but uh, <laughs> that didn't fly, which is fine. But this is great. This is great. So. Um, what it's about is, is encouraging men to get regular checkups for prostate cancer, for testicular cancer, it's easy for me to say, and um, for taking away the stigma of going and seeing a therapist when you're feeling depressed. So men are notoriously horrible about that. So we want to uh, push men to do that and, and want to encourage women to um, encourage the men you love to do that as well. So uh, thank you, Council, for this resolution and, and bringing light to this uh, movement. Thank you, Councilman Withers, for, uh, for, for sponsoring this and for setting the bar for us to reach. So, uh, pun intended, bar, handle bar. Okay, thank you very much. Have a good one. Let's get a picture. We'll move on to elections and confirmations. Uh, is there a report from the Rules, Confirmation, and Public Elections Committee? Council A. Haywood. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yes, the Rules, Confirmation, and Public Elections took a look at the CATV Special Committee and the appointment of Mr. Mark Rowan for a term expiring March the 1st, 2018. We approved uh, it by a vote of 7-4 and 0 against. And, and if we would call for the approval. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Mark Rowan to the CATV Special Committee. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Council A. Haywood. Okay, next we have the Social Services Commission. We have the appointment of Mr. Philip Orr for a term expiring April the 3rd, 2019. And uh, we have an approval of seven, four, and zero against. Could we call for confirmation? You've heard, you've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Philip Orr to the Social Services Commission. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next, we have the Sports Authority, the reappointment of Mr. Chuck Merriweather for a term expiring October the 19th of 2023. The vote was eight four and zero against, and I'd like to call for the confirmation. You've heard the motion for confirmation of Mr. Chuck Merriweather to the Sports Authority. It's been properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Council Lady Haywood. We would like to recognize those citizens who were confirmed tonight. So if you will please stand as I call your name and remain standing until all have been introduced. To the CAT Special Committee, Mr. Mark Rowan. To the Social Services Commission, Mr. Philip Orr, and to the Sports, Asso Sports Authority, Mr. Chuck Merriweather. On behalf of the entire Metro Council and the citizens of Davidson County, we would like to thank you for your willingness to serve and to volunteer your time and expertise on behalf of the city. Thank you very much. We'll get started with bills on public resolutions on public hearing. 
as soon as everyone takes a seat. Okay, we are on resolution RS 2017-937. Sponsor, Council Member Davis, Scott Davis. Huh? Resolution RS 2017-937. Hang on. Now go. Thank you, Madam President. I'd open the public hearing, please. We're going to open the public hearing. Please raise your hand if you are in support of RS 2017 937. Please raise your hand if you're in opposition. Seeing no one in opposition, does anyone in favor like to speak? Seeing none, Mr. Davis? I like to. Uh, Close the public hearing and move for approval, please. There's been a motion to close the public hearing and move for approval. Do I hear a second? All in favor? Opposed? Uh, Madam Chair, do we need committee reports? Sorry, I forgot committee reports. Oops. Carolyn Roberts. Council Member Roberts. Public safety voted five in favor, zero against. Thank you. Now, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion, I'm sorry, resolution passes. We're gonna move to resolution 20, RS 2017-938, and that would be Council Member O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. Would like to open the public hearing, please. Okay, do I hear and see any raised hands in favor? Anyone in opposition raise your hand? Does anyone in, well, seeing none on either side, I'm, I'm looking behind the poll there. I don't see anybody behind the post. Okay. So seeing none on either side, we will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Madam President. We'd like to close the public hearing and request committee reports, please. Okay, committee reports. That'll be Ms. Roberts. And hang on. I can't find her again. Will you hit your press to talk button? Never mind, I found it. Sorry. Committee Madam reports. Chair, public safety voted five in favor, zero against. Thank you. Councilmember O'Connell. Thank you, Madam President. We'd like to move approval with a brief explanation. Okay, you may. Uh, on this one, we did discuss it briefly uh, in committee. This is actually the same site uh, as uh, a previous variance, uh, a waiver for a distance waiver, and it's basically a change in establishment, but the, uh, the establishment did work with the community, um, and I feel comfortable letting this one proceed. Thank you, Madam President. And I'd like to renew my motion to approve. Is there a second? All in favor? Opposed? Resolution passes. That brings us to bills on public hearing, Bill 2017-850, Councilman Sledge. Uh, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 10 and 0. Changes 1.73 acres from R6A to SB zoning for properties located at 530, 534, and 536 Southgate Avenue to permit up to 49 multifamily units. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of Bill 2017-850, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing only those in favor. I'm gonna, tonight, since we have so many people outside the chambers tonight, I'm probably gonna stall a little bit just to make sure people get in, but, but I don't see anybody opposed, Councilman Sledge. Do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, I'd like to move approval. There's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. 
Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-893, Council Lady Blaylock, Councilman Swope, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission, seven and zero. Changes 15.1 acres from R40 to SR zoning for property located at Edmondson Pike on number to permit an, un an assisted living facility. Council Lady Blaylock. Thank you, I'd like to defer this to the first public hearing meeting in January. The first meeting in December? January. January. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in January. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 uh, Councilman Scott Davis approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6011. Changes 5.94 acres from IR to SP zoning for properties located at 905 Cherokee Avenue to permit up to 166 multifamily residential units and uh, 23,700 square feet of non-residential units. Councilman Scott Davis. Uh, I'd open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-902, please raise your hands. As long as they come in with their hands up, I'm gonna... All right, now everybody empty your pockets. No. <laughs> All right, those in favor, those opposed? Okay, uh, those in favor, uh, please line up to speak. Um, you have three minutes, and uh, please state your name and address. And um, then once that group is done, those opposed will have to be given an opportunity to speak as well, thank you. It's crazy out there, just so I'm, you know. I'm, I think uh, it is, I think I'm it is. Kim Hawkins with Hawkins Partners uh, Landscape Architects here representing aerial development. Um, we appreciate the opportunity over the last eight months of working with the community and being able to present a number of times to Highland Heights and East Hill with their development committees, as well as open community meetings for the opportunity to put this mixed use development uh, within this neighborhood in an area that has been industrial for many numbers of years. So the opportunity for this neighborhood to receive residential housing as well as um, restaurant entertainment office uh, space is something that's much needed. And um, we're consistent with the community policy and have appreciated the help all the way through with the planning commission and uh, council person uh, Scott Davis and the community. So thank you. Hi, good evening, Josh Randolph with Aerial Development Group. Um, just want to echo what Kim said. Uh, we just would appreciate uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Scott Davis for all his support and uh, for the neighbor neighbors at both, both East Hill and Highland Heights Neighborhood Association that uh, we went out and presented them with the project and uh, they were all in support of the project and very welcoming. So uh, we're excited for the project and we ask for your support. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Seeing none, those in opposition, please come forward. Those in opposition, please come forward. I don't know if he hears me. I know there is a gentleman in the back who raised his hand. So there he comes. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Mr. Vice Mayor, Council Members. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Gordon Stacy Harmon and I reside at 1826 Joyce Circle and am a member of the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association. My home is located less than three quarters of a mile from several proposed developments, two of which are on the agenda for tonight. I stand opposed to this zoning change as presented for two simple reasons, density of the project and its impact to the infrastructure. In combination with three other projects, East Tennessee, East Trinity Lane SP, 1801 Meridian, and Marshall Crossing, we stand to see 529 additional residences to a relatively small area, roughly one-third of a square mile. Density of this level is not only unwise, but potentially destructive to our neighborhood. Streets like Trinity Lane, Lishy Avenue, Edwin Street, and Jones Avenue were never designed to handle the traffic resulting from such development. In the case of this development, the quickest access to Ellington Parkway or I-65, is crossing Ellington using Jones and Trinity Lane 
to then access either thoroughfare. This project, like the East Trinity SP, will have two limited access points. That's two entrance exit points for all traffic, vehicular and pedestrian, that are going from these pocket neighborhoods onto existing two-lane streets. Like other high-density projects, this proposal takes a general design for suburban neighborhoods and plops it into an urban environment. Where the existing neighborhood has a grid of streets, these neighborhood islands will have very limited access, but will empty onto streets designed decades ago. As a Nashvilleian, I understand development and change is bound to happen. Increasing density is understandable, but incredibly high density may very well strain existing infrastructure to the breaking point. These high density neighborhood islands may contain adequate infrastructure to accommodate new residents, but may lead to breaking existing systems, impacting current residents in unpredictable ways. I hope this body considers my remarks and the impact that, this, that the aggregate of all these projects will have on my community. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, Vice Mayor and members of this body. My name is Ashanti Davis. I live on Edwin Street, which is about less than a mile from this proposed development. I'm also a member of the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association, and I'm also a member of the steering committee and the development committee. I was here at your meeting in October when the Meridian SP went through, and at that meeting I asked you to think about the aggregate impact of this neighborhood. Alone on your agenda tonight, there are many items that propose either upzoning or increased density projects in this area. I'm a lawyer, and a lot of times we create rules and there's a purpose behind the rules. If we cre keep creating SPs and exceptions to existing zoning rules, we have to think about the aggregate impact on the integrity of the existing neighborhood. I'm 33 years old. I've lived in the Highland Hate neighborhood my entire life. My family has lived on the Edwin Street. I actually bought a property three houses up from my parents. They've lived on that lot for more than four generations. I've seen the neighborhood change and I understand that change will happen. I just ask that in light of the aging infrastructure, in light of the fact that these streets that we're talking about are very narrow, and even though it's located near main corridors, those streets aren't designed for main corridors. Two lane traffic can barely get through now. And so if we keep increasing the density, if we cre keep allowing upzoning, we keep allowing SPs, we have to ask ourselves, what's the integrity of the neighborhood going to look like five years from now, 10 years from now? I believe in the long view of history. A lot of times we can't see things through the short term, but if we, look at what, if we think about things, what they'll look like 25 years from now, maybe then it'll give us some perspective on what we should be doing and be more intentional about what we allow in this neighborhood. I sincerely appreciate you guys listening to me. I will be up in another 30 minutes when there's another item in my neighborhood, and thank you all so much. Seeing no one else in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation. The floor is yours. Some of you who are unfamiliar with this, this is the area right off of Gallatin Road going down Delmas, and Delmas connects to Cherokee. The area is an intense industrial area. Um, A, we're not displacing. A, we are creating some affordable housing opportunities here. Second, the infrastructure dollars that are being put in this project are millions. It's an SP uh, approved by the planning staff and by the commission. And I want to thank my neighbors that came out in support and in opposition. And I'd like to move for approval, please. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Council Lady Vircher. I didn't have any comment on this, Vice Mayor. I was sitting for mine. Apologies. No problem. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-903, Council Lady Vircher, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0, amends the Metro Code pertaining to lighting. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open a public hearing. All those in favor of Bill 2017-903, please raise your hands. All those opposed? Seeing none on either side, uh, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Vircher. I'd like to move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-916, Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.27 acres from CL to MULA zoning for property located uh, at 2006 South Hamilton Road. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move at this time to defer uh, this uh, one meeting 
There's a motion to defer one. Two meetings. There's two a meetings. motion to defer to the December public hearing. Yes. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Bill 2017-917, Council Lady Haywood, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 6 and 0. Changes 18.04 acres from CS and RS 7.5 to SP zoning uh, for properties located at 3474 Dickerson Pike and Dickerson Pike unnumbered to permit the development of up to 267 multifamily units, a clubhouse and associate amenity, associated amenities and up to 15,000 square feet of commercial space along Dickerson and Pike. Council Lady Haywood. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to defer the public hearing until the first um, meeting in January. There's a motion to okay. defer to the first meeting in January. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-918, Councilman Scott Davis, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 10.08 acres from RS5 to SP zoning for property located at East Trinity Lane, unnumbered, to permit up to 190 multifamily residential units. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-918, please raise your hands. I'm going to hold off here for a second while we have some people filter in. All those in favor of BL 2017-918, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Those in favor, please come forward to speak. State your name, address, and you get three minutes each, please. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Gore, there you go. Good evening. My name is John Gore. I'm with Barge Cawthon and Associates, who are the applicant and the civil engineers on this project. This project sits on 10 uh, vacant acres of Trinity Lane, just west of Ellington Parkway. The proposed zoning is to allow for two multifamily buildings, which will address Trinity Lane, transi transitioning to townhomes and single-family homes as you move back to the rear of the site. Uh, this uh, project has been uh, in the works for several months. We've been working with planning and all the other uh, Metro Department staffs very closely. Uh, during the SP review process, we worked uh, with planning specifically on the layout uh, to provide a step down in density as the site gets back into the neighborhood and focus the denser buildings on Trinity Lane. The southern portion of the site includes a specific tree preservation zone uh, with internal drives and proposed single family homes that have been laid out to minimize earthwork and maximize the uh, preservation of mature trees. We've worked with Metro uh, Water Services on infrastructure strategies for water and sewer, as well as incorporating Metro Stormwater water quality requirements. Uh, in addition to that, we've worked with Public Works and a traffic study was completed uh, by RPM and Associates in March of this year, and that traffic study has been approved by Metro Public Works. Uh, it includes over 1,000 linear feet of new public sidewalks along uh, Edwin Street and Trinity Lane, as well as widening both of those streets to bring them into compliance with uh, current Metro codes. Thank you. Andrew Beard um, with LVH LLC and Core Development. I um, just want to speak really quickly to the neighborhood consultation piece of this. Um, we started working with the neighborhood um, late summer. So we've been months into this, multiple meetings with neighborhood um, stakeholders. We've worked most directly with two influential organizations in the neighborhood, the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association and Martha Carroll, as well as Trinity Community Commons, which is an NGO that's located in the, in the neighborhood. Um, both of the chairman of the Neighborhood Association as well as Trinity Com Commons has submitted um, a letter uh, that you should have on record. And I'll let that kind of speak to the details of the level of um, consultation that we went through. Um, and so we feel good about the process that's taken place in terms of addressing the concerns that have come up. Um, in particular, we feel like the attributes um, that are relevant to the project 
um, include basically no displacement of existing residents in the neighborhood, the densification of a major corridor in East Trinity Lane and Elmington Parkway, partnership with affordable housing resources to provide affordable housing on 1.5 acres, low impact development standards, uh, mixed density, as well as a wide range of entry level um, home ownership, ranging from $150,000 to $370,000. Um, so I would just ask for your support and thank you, Scott, uh, for your time and effort. Thank you. Anyone else in favor? Seeing none, those in opposition, please come forward. Good evening once again, Mr. Vice Mayor, Council Members. Thanks again for the opportunity to speak on this one. As a reminder, my name is Gordon Stacy Harmon. I reside at 1826 Joy Circle. I stand opposed to this zoning change for the same two simple reasons I stated earlier. Density of the project, its impact to the infrastructure. As a reminder, this project in com combination with three others, Cherokee Avenue from earlier, 1801 Meridian and Marshall Crossing, we stand to see 529 additional residences to an area roughly one third of a square mile in size. I must reiterate that such high density projects as this stand to strain existing systems to the point they'll need to be improved later as a response to this development. What happens when Trinity Lanes becomes so congested we need to widen it even further to accommodate traffic? What's the long-term plan for handling traffic turning onto Trinity with limited sight lines while increased traffic from Oakwood in the opposite direction is facing the same challenges? We already see traffic calming challenges within our existing density. Development and change is necessary to accommodate new residents. I implore this council as well as the city administration to reconsider high density projects like these for more rural sections of our county. Consider projects that keep density more in line with current zoning. Past city planners designed our neighborhood to only handle so much and without a more comprehensive plan to improve existing infrastructure, we stand to face even more challenges. Lastly, I've heard our councilmen stand in this chamber and state that some of these projects have been well received by our neighborhood. After getting involved and listening to a number of my neighbors, I disagree with his representation related to these high density development projects. Again, I hope this body considers my remarks and the impact that the aggregate, aggregate of these projects will have on my community. Thanks again for your time and attention. Hi again, my name is Ashanti Davis. I live at 321 Edwin Street. Um, as Honestly, I think Mr. Harmon hit all of the high points. I actually really appreciate you all taking the time to listen to us and giving us the opportunity to have a public hearing. Um, I recently joined the Highland Heights Neighborhood Association, but as someone who lived there my entire life, to be honest with you, most of us, we're starting another organization within our neighborhood because most of us didn't know that organization existed until recently when we started seeing all these dense projects go through. And while I think the Neighborhood Association has done a good job to be a forum for the neighbors and the developers to sort of present their ideas, as you know, neighborhoods are very diverse and people have a wide array of opinions. And a lot of people don't agree with this type of density in this area. We understand that Nashville is growing and that we have to accommodate that growth. But that growth, there should be some sort of compromise in the middle in light of the aging infrastructure in our area. If I took a tape measure from both ends of Edwin, you could take a 25 inch or 25 foot tape measure from both ends and it would cover it. That's how narrow that street is. And while the developer will widen that street, he's not going to widen all of Edwin. He's only going to widen the part of Edwin that his development touches, which makes sense because that's all he's responsible to do. And I don't, I, I don't expect that he would do any more than what he's responsible to do. But I say that to say that taking this piece by piece approach, this piecemeal approach to development, to infrastructure, negatively impacts everybody there who already lives there. That street, Edwin, is entirely single family homes. Now, with this project, which the Trinity SP is sort of misleading because most of the development is on Edwin, you will now have townhomes and cottage homes, most of which will be on Edwin. Only, the only part that impacts Trinity is the first part of this development, but most of it is on Edwin, and Edwin is a residential street. It is not Trinity Lane. And just like in other areas, that's why this body is so important. It's about equity. The fact of the matter is, other parts of East Nashville have been developed, but there's not stacked condos as a part of that development. The development has happened within the existing character of the neighborhood. If you go to West Nashville, same thing. Charlotte has blown up. But as soon as you turn off of Charlotte into Westmead, 
Those are homes. They've always been single family homes. And no one's proposing 190 units, half, some of which are condos, some of which are townhomes, in a neighborhood that already has an existing quality. So I ask that you all consider the aggregate impact. Over time, you guys have allowed a lot of upzoning to go through and a lot of SPs to go through. And I just ask that you consider that. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Seeing no one in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval with a, with a brief explanation. Floor's yours. I want to thank the folks that came out in support and in opposition. This project involves a lot of money in sidewalks. And it does involve a lot of density. Um, it was approved eight to zero by the commission and the SP was approved by the staff members also. But what I'm most happy about this project, we received a letter today and, and this is what I'm gonna ask. If there's not an agreement by third reading, then, I, then at third I will defer it. And the agreement I'm speaking of the developer has offered, and affordable housing solutions and a few others have, are in the process of accepting two acres of land donated to build affordable housing. That was one of the things the neighbors asked for, and it's one of the things I strongly advocated for, is you know it's not enough just to build some affordable, but if your specialty is not to build affordable, give the land to somebody else that can. And Everybody talks about, you know, giving away free land. It's a big theme tonight, but this developer is giving away free land. They're building the sidewalks. They're building the infrastructure. They're paying into the water and other in lieu funds, and they're building extra stormwater infrastructure, saving mature trees. And we're not displacing anybody. This is vacant land. And more importantly here is, we talk about affordable housing. And we're trying to pay a true, true service by giving two acres of land to affordable housing, you know, incorporate Eddie Latimer's group and others, you know, and we have another project that's gonna be coming up later on in January, which we're gonna take this to a whole new level also, where we're gonna put displaced people that were displaced from the fifth back into new homes. And I just wanna continue with this this drumbeat of, of providing affordable housing and bringing people back home that were displaced. And the developers giving land, you know, to affordable housing resources and to next level, and to other LLCs and nonprofits that will build the affordable housing. And I just want to move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-919, uh, Councilman Syracuse, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 1.36 acres from CS and ON to SP zoning for properties located at 406 and 408 Spence Lane to permit a mixed-use development with a maximum of 10,000 square feet of retail office personal care service and restaurant uses and a maximum of four multifamily residential units. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-919, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, if those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? <laughs> Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-920, Councilman O'Connell, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.84 acres from R6 to SB zoning for property located at 1716, 1718, 1720, and 1722 Delta Avenue and Trowel Street, unnumbered, to permit up to 18 residential units. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor, Bill 2017-920, please raise your hands. The, those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Ms. Rice. May I like to request committee reports, please? 
You'll have to wait till the next meeting. Okay, sorry, it was referred. <laughs> Never mind then. I would like to move approval of the brief explanation. Floor yours. This one was a great uh, example of kind of how a project unfolds in the community. We had this, this was a case where there was uh, a, a, a smaller project, but we had, we kind of overcame some land use issues and worked with the developer uh, who committed to do affordable. And then we had a nearby project in the same neighborhood that was uh, working on a, a mechanism to ensure that affordability would last well into the future. There was collaboration between two different development groups, and it's just one of those things that I'm especially glad to see uh, that is generating affordable housing uh, in District 19, and it's, it's just been great to see the collaboration of neighbors who have contributed input as well as two different development groups, uh, each of which is committed to doing uh, affordable housing and private development projects. So really, really pleased with this one and uh, like to renew my motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-921, Councilman Hastings, approved by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 0.29 acres from RS10 to OR20A zoning for property located at 2000 South Hamilton Road. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to move to defer this uh, reading, uh, public hearing, until December, the first meeting in December. There's a motion to defer to the pu December public hearing. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 922, Council Lady Roberts, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 0 and 1. Changes 3.92 acres from CS to SP zoning for property is located at 685 and 693 Vernon Avenue to permit 58 multifamily residential units, including a maximum of nine live work units. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. But all those in favor of BL 2017-922, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, to those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Council A. Roberts. I'd like to move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-923, Councilman Scott Davis. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 0.17 acres from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 113, I'm sorry, um, that's right, 113 East Moreland. Street, uh, Councilman Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-923, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move for approval of a brief, brief explanation. Closures. Sure. I want to thank the planning staff for their hard work on this one. This is actually... The, there are two sisters that are, that are African American women who are retired Metro police officers who are rezoning their family's property and they still live on the street and they'll be participating in what we're calling the It City rebuilding. And so I'm very proud of this, this family and also of their service to our wonderful department for many years. And I wanna thank the planning staff for helping move this along, thank you. It's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 924, Councilman Leonardo. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 4.41 acres from RS10 to SP zoning for properties located at Herming Hummingbird Drive, unnumbered, to permit 26 multifamily residential units. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-924, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Leonardo. I move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-925, Council Lady Van Rees. Approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 4.39 acres from R10 to SP zoning for properties located at Briarville Road, unnumbered, and Sharon Road, unnumbered, to permit up to 81 multifamily units and non-residential units. Council Lady Van Rees. 
May we please open the public hearing? All those in favor of Bill 2017-925, please, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Can't see behind the pillar, but I don't, I think it was only in favor. Uh, those in favor wish to speak, declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Van Rees. Thank you very much. Um, with a brief exclamation, I move approval. Floor shares. Um, just wanted to point out uh, that there are going to be some name changes coming to these roads. So if you hear about uh, Creative Way Village Center, um, that is the same thing as the Sharon Road Village Center that you're seeing now. It's uh, directly across from the NOSI College of Art. And with their approval, as well as the rest of the neighbors, I ask for your support. Thank you. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-926, Councilman Hastings. Approved with conditions by the Planning Commission 701. Changes 9.18 acres from RS5 to R6 zoning for property located at 610 Vester Avenue. Councilman Hastings. Again, Mr. President, would like to open the public hearing. All those in favor of Bill 2017-926, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, Councilman Hastings. Yes, sir, we'd like to move for approval. There's a motion to approve, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. We'll take the next two together. BL 2017-927, Council Lady Blaylock, approved by the Planning Commission 601. Cancels 4.22 acres of a planned unit development overlay district for properties located at Old Hickory Boulevard, unnumbered east of Knowlesville Pike. And BL 2017-928, Council Lady Blaylock, approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 601. Changes 0.22 acres from SCR to SP zoning for property located at Old Hickory Boulevard, unnumbered east of Noblesville Pike to permit a self-storage facility. Um, Council Lady Blaylock. Please open the public hearing. I'm sorry, you're, you're turned on, yeah. You open the public hearing, please. Uh, would all those in favor of Bill 2017-927 and 928 please raise your hands. All those opposed to Bill 2017-927 and 928. Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Council Lady Blaylock. Thank you. I wish to pass this now. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-929, Councilman Leonardo, approved with conditions, disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 5.55 acres from AR2A to SB zoning for property located at 1010 Camilla Caldwell Lane to permit up to 40 multifamily residential units. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. Would all those in uh, favor of BL 2017-929 please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none opposed, I didn't see any opposed, did you mean, Councilman? Seeing none opposed, are those in favor wish to speak? Is there one opposed? There's somebody in favor. Okay, we're just gonna start over on that. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Okay, seeing, I'm seeing, seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? If you'd like to speak in favor, come on up. Please state your name and address. You have three minutes. We've been here for a while. Good evening. My name is Ruby Baker, and I live at 3222 Leewood Drive in Nashville, Le uh, District 1. And um, let me see, get my notes here. I'm here to speak to make sure our our support is documented for the support of this MDHA development. When we were presented with this development, we had three concerns, and one was what it was going to look like, and the second concern was the stormwater runoff, and the third is what the rent would be for the units. So the SP that was presented to us, it will cover what the design and the structure will look like. And we've also looked at the grading plans that were submitted, the preliminary plans, and that includes two retention ponds that will 
be sufficient to retain more than 100% of the water runoff. Also, it will also improve our neighborhood infrastructure as far as the uh, drainage. So that will not be a negative impact on our neighborhood. The last piece that we were concerned about is what the rent would be for the units. We were told that the targeted income was 120% of the AMI. Now we understand that there will be multiple sources of funding for this project. What we want to see is what the funding plan for this project will be. Uh, we want to see that in writing. Now, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use your terminology or not, but where I am and what we understand is we want to see how this project is going to be paid for. Because what we understand is the funding will have a lot to do with how the rent is um, assessed on this property, if that's how you look at it. So there are certain requirements for uh, certain funding that we understand. So we're not saying that we do not want Section 8, which is dis uh, uh, discriminating, but we have more than our fair share of very low to low medium income in our area. So we wanted to target income that was higher so we could have more of a mixed use and less concentrated poverty in our area. So we are asking that you approve the bill at this point and we will work with our council member and wait for a meeting so we can see in writing what the funding will be for this project. So we won't be blindsided if there is a requirement for affordable homes, uh, low income, or whatever the category is. We need to see the funding for this project. And I hope I'm wording it correctly so you will understand what I'm saying, because we're not trying to discriminate. We just want to improve our area. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Baker. <clears throat> My name is Jeffrey Stewart. I live at 1457 Snell. That's the street that's right on the, uh, the, the borderline of this new development. I'm here in, in uh, support of the development for the same reasons as Ms. Baker, but also for the reason that in our area there hasn't been any improvement since back in the 70s, the early 70s. So we have been at the table with the, the planners and been up here a few times speaking in on behalf of this project, but for the same reason we want, we want to know exactly, like I said, what's, what's, how it's being funded and what we're in for on the, on the, uh, on the other end as far as the, 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 the cost of everything. But again, it's because we haven't had any improvement across that bridge, across the Brado Bridge since back in the 70s. And this is something that we're, we're looking very forward to. And, uh, I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Seeing no one else in favor and no one in opposition, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor yours. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank Ms. Baker and also Mr. Stewart for coming out and speaking on this issue. Um, this project's been in the works for quite some time, uh, and the land was actually tied up with the Autumn Hills debacle, and now that that's been straightened out, uh, the land is freed up. Uh, the original cost of the project was $4.5 million, and so uh, we've been having meetings with MDHA, and I felt like the residents in the Bordeaux neighborhood deserve the same quality development that we're seeing MDHA do in Rolling Mill Hill, that we're seeing them do in the Gulch, and that we're seeing them do elsewhere in Nashville. So with some uh, coercion, let's say, uh, Mr. Harbison agreed, and now the project's going to be $9.5 million. And so uh, that's a positive, very positive thing. But I will, I want to let Ms. Baker know and anyone else who's watching that uh, this project will not move forward at all. It will stop dead in its tracks if the legislation does not mirror the, what has been presented to this community. And it's going to be in accordance with the fair housing assessment that was, you know, recently done by MDHA, taking that into account. Uh, and, and I'm proud of this. I think we can uh, definitely get the legislation right. And I'm here to tell you that things are uh, on the up and up on County Hospital Road, and I'm very proud to be a part of that. Thank you. Council Lee Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. I just wanted to uh, share with uh, Council Member uh, Leonardo that I 
uh, stand in support, and I look forward to him bringing uh, forward that legislation. And I wanted to thank Ms. Baker and the other gentlemen uh, for sharing as well. And I think they articulated very well uh, the need to have new development, but they articulated when you have, excuse me, I'll stand up, it's, it's a late night, um, that, but when you have a certain amount of income levels that you just want to diverse that, diversify that. So I stand in support. Look forward to working with you on that. I think you've done a good job with your constituents, and I thank them for coming out. So when you bring that forward, please keep me al alerted. Thank you. Councilman Bidney. Yeah, thank, thank you, Vice Mayor. I just uh, wanted to support uh, and thank the council member and also Ms. Baker uh, for coming here. I, I just want to emphasize that uh, this idea that uh, we need to build affordability outside the core of the city is, is what you heard here today, which you, ha you have heard from the Southeast council members. We need to have citywide affordable housing, workforce housing all over the city and not try to just take advantage of uh, uh, more economical, uh, affordable land. And that requires that we support MDHA, that we support the Barnes Fund so they can have the resources to purchase the land to make that affordability happen citywide. So just wanted to, you, you guys heard me say this before, I wanted to take the opportunity to repeat it again. Thank you. Councilman Hastings. Yes, sir, Mr. President. I just wanted to stand and give my, my uh, uh, cheer to uh, Councilman Leonardo for all of his, his hard work. And uh, he and I, we both share the Bordeaux community. Uh, I know there's a lot of things that are moving over in District 2, uh, but we want the same to go forward in District 1 because we share the same area and we want the outcome of that community to move like never before. So I'm very, very excited about that, and I am going to work with him uh, like never before to make sure that this project and other projects that are coming forth, even if it does start with M MDHA, go in the right direction. Thank you. Councilor Hurt. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just want to stand and uh, say how happy I am that this project is moving forward. Having the opportunity to work with District 1 and to see this come to fruition is really a great thing. And I, too, want to uh, give commendation to Ms. Baker and Mr. Stewart and the entire District 1 that have come together and make sure that this thing happens. Seeing no one else speak, seeking recognition, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-930, Council Lady Karen Johnson, approved with conditions by the Planning Commission 701. Changes 14.3 acres from AR 2A to RS 10 zoning for property located at 3612 Butler Road. Without objection, we'll move that to the heel. BL 2017-931, Council Lady Hurt, Council Lady Wiener. Approved with conditions disapproved without by the Planning Commission 7 and 0. Changes 2.87 acres from R15 to SP zoning for property located at 7341 Charlotte Pike to permit up to 27 multifamily units. Council Lady Hurt. Okay, Council Lady Wiener. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to defer this to the public hearing in December. There's a motion to defer to the December public hearing. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Substitute B Bill BL 2017-933. I'm sorry, 932. Councilman Scott Davis. Requests an urban design overlay for 165.21 acres of property along Cowan Street, Cowan Court, and North First Street. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to open public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-932, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Scott Davis. I'd like to move for approval with a brief explanation, please. Floor's yours. I'd like to thank my fellow council members um, over the years helping me develop the Cowan Riverfront area. I'd like to thank Councilman Withers and Councilman Anthony. 
um, Davis for the help last term and this term. I'd also like to thank some of the many new faces on the council. I'd like to thank the Planning Commission for their patience and also for their long hours working on this UDO. Um, but one thing I love about this UDO, people look at it, they think one property owner is benefiting, which one property owner benefits the most. But you see other property owners benefiting from this too. You see people that live in, who work and build things in the fifth district, who own schools, um, who are African American. You also see women, and you also see um, Asian hotel owners benefiting from this UDO. And the second largest project will be done by a family that lives in North Nashville, um, the Day family, who um, you may know who are, you know, they're, the, the, the patriarch of the family is married to Mother Brunson's um, daughter, and which you know that family, and they will have the second largest project on this great riverfront development. And those of you who know that family know that they've been very involved here in Nashville, and especially those of you who are familiar with the Brunson family through their, through TS Tennessee State University. And this is a very inclusive project on the riverfront, which is going to be the gym of my neighborhood, and more importantly, it's going to provide access to Germantown from my end of the river, and also expand our downtown area. And this is the area where Top Golf is. Um, but I just want people to know the work that our planning department put in this, the help from the surrounding council members, and hopefully this riverfront overlay will extend into other parts, not even in my district, maybe District Two maybe District 1 and other areas, too. I just want to thank the planning staff and my fellow colleagues that have helped me get this far. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councilman. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BO 2017-933, Councilman O'Connell. Changes approved by the Planning Commission 801. Changes 48.23 acres from R6 to R6A zoning for various properties along Scoville Street, Monroe Street, 9th Avenue North, 10th Avenue North, Mary Street, 11th Avenue North, Garfield Street, Jenkins Street, Nassau Street, and Buchanan Street. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of BL 2017-933, please raise your hands. Those opposed? I saw somebody buying a car back there. Although I think that was just uh, that was not a that was not a sign, was it, Councilman? Declare the public hearing closed, Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval of the brief comment. The floor is yours. Uh, I have this and one other bill coming up that are actually uh, followed closely on some work that uh, Councilman Sledge and I did collaboratively in the Edge Hill neighborhood where neighbors led us through a discussion on how to preserve both character and walkability in their community. Uh, that led to our uh, widespread adoption of an alternative uh, version of R6 zoning with some minor design standard tweaks that are uh, designed to preserve the integrity of a sidewalk network in a community. We've now since conducted successful community meetings both in Salem Town, my neighborhood, as well as uh, adjacent historic Buena Vista. Those community meetings went very well and I'm excited to have this one uh, and another uh, similar bill coming up just down the road here uh, on tonight's public hearing and, and look forward to supporting these uh, as they make their way all the way through the zoning process. Thank you and I'll renew my motion to approve. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BO 2017-834, Councilman Hastings, approved with conditions by the Planning Commission 7 and 0, changes 1.0 acres from RS 7.5 to R6 zoning for properties located at 2608 Old uh, Univista Road. Councilman Hastings. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. We'd like to open up the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-934, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Hastings. I would like to move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. BL 2017-935, Councilman Pulley. Approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Uh, changes 10.35 acres from R10 to RS10, zoning for property located on Drawn Avenue and Leland Lane. Uh, my old home place. Council Councilman Pulley. Uh, yes, I'd move to open the public hearing, being as it looks like uh, everybody has made it into the building. 
Moved to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-935, please raise your hands. All those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare, the, I'm thinking no. Declare the public hearing closed. Councilman Pulley. I would uh, move approval. Is there a substitute, Councilman? Oh, yes, I do need to move the substitute. Sorry about that. I there's, a motion, the there's a motion to substitute. It is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. You're on your bill as substituted now. I would move approval of the bill as substituted. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017936, Councilman O'Connell. Uh, approved by the Planning Commission 8 and 0. Changes 58.97 acres from R6 to R6A. Zoning for various property uh, along Buchanan Street, Hume Street, Garfield Street, 3rd Avenue North, 4th Avenue North, 5th Avenue North, 6th Avenue North, and 7th Avenue North. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Ms. Vice Mayor. I'd like to open the public hearing, please. All those in favor of Bill 2017-936, please raise your hands. Those opposed? Seeing none on either side, declare the public hearing closed. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval of brief comment. Floor's yours. Uh, as promised, here is the other one of those bills. If uh, any of my colleagues are concerned about a preponderance of front-loaded garages or parking pads in the front or a, a, a lot of uh, curb cuts that are disrupting areas where children and families are trying to walk to parks, libraries, or community centers, I do encourage you to look at the alternative uh, versions of some of the base zonings we have. This is a great tool. I'm pleased to have Historic Buena Vista and Salem Town following Edge Hill's lead here, and I will renew my motion to approve. This is a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-937, Councilman Shulman, referred to the Planning Commission. Amends the Metro Code to add a new chapter pertain pertaining to short-term rental properties advisory committee and to establish regulations regarding short-term rental properties. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I need to move the substitute. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Council Lady Roberts would like to be recorded as abstaining on this bill. Councilman Shulman, you're on your bill as substituted. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I would now like to move to defer the public hearing and second reading until the first meeting in December. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in December. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-938, Councilman Glover. Uh, amends the Metro Code pertaining to sidewalks to establish an exemption for religious institutions in the General Services District. Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I move to defer this until the first uh, meeting in January. There's a motion to defer to the first meeting in January. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That takes us back now to BL 2017-930, Council Lady Karen Johnson, approved by the Planning Commission 701. Changes 14.3 acres from AR2A to RS10 zoning for property located at 3612 Butler Road. Council Lady Karen Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to move to open the public hearing. All those in favor of BL 2017-930, please raise your hands. Uh, all those opposed? Seeing none opposed, do those in favor wish to speak? Declare the public hearing closed. Councilor Lady Johnson. Thank you. I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. That concludes uh, public hearings and brings us to the uh, resolutions on the consent agenda. The following items are currently on the consent agenda. RS 2017 920, 926, and 939 through 956, 958 through 62. Are there any items you'd like to, that would like to be pulled off the consent agenda? Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to pull 920, please. Okay. Council Lady Wayso. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I'd like to pull 962, please. Okay, thank you. Councilman Bedney. 946. Thank you. Councilman Withers. 
I think Mr. Vice Mayor, I was going to pull 962. It's already been pulled from consent. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. So if you'll bear with me, I'll read through the consent agenda. The following items are on the consent agenda. RS 2017 926 for Adrian Roberts. Approves an agreement between the United States Department of Justice and the Metro Police Department to provide police assistance to the Middle Tennessee Drug Enforcement Task Force. RS 2017 913. Nine, Virtue Bendy and others authorizes the director of public property to exercise option agreements for the purchase of various flood prone properties for Metro Water Services, RS 2017 940, Virtue Elrod and others. Approves a contract between the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Water and Sewerage Services to utilize unused funds to complete the purchase and removal of 11 previously identified properties, RS 2017 941, Virtue Elrod and others. Approves a contract between the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency and the Department of Water and Sewer Services to utilize unused funds to complete the purchase and removal of 15 previously identified properties. RS 2017-942, Virtue of Bedna and Hager, uh, appropriates $1,184,684. I'm sorry. Appropriates $1,184,684 for a grant from the Tennessee Department of Transportation for the Metro Planning Commission for fiscal years 2018 to 2020. RS 2017 943, Virtue Roten and others, approves a 440 Greenway Tiger um, 9 grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation to the Metro Board of Parks and Recreation to construct the 440 Greenway from Melrose Battlemont Park to Sevier Park and Park Plaza to Boyd Park. RS 2017 944, Virtue Roten approves a grant from the Tennessee to, uh, State Library and Archives to the National Public Library to target library materials to persons having difficulty using a library and to provide such special services to children and young people. RS 2017 945, Virtue and Roten approves a grant from the Tennessee Lib State Library and Archives to the National Public Library to purchase computers for use by library pa patrons and staff and to enhance the use of technology services available at the public library. RS 2017 946, Virtue and Roberts approves a, an application for the 2017 Homeland Security Grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to Metro Government. RS 2017 947, Virtue and Roberts. I'm sorry, um, I read 946. I realized that um, should have not been on the consent agenda, so I won't so accept my apologies for that. RS 2017 947, Council Lady Virtue and Roberts approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metro Police Department for the continuance of the enhanced DUI and in, in, uh, enforcement initiative to reduce traffic fatalities attributed to impaired drivers through aggressive enfor enforcement. RS 2017-948, Council Lady Virtue approves a grant from the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security to the Metro Drug Court program to undertake alcohol countermeasures highway safety projects to reduce the number of driving under the influence cases in Tennessee. RS 2017 949. Council Lady uh, Murphy, are, do you need to abstain on that one? Okay. It's on consent. I'm going to take it off consent. Okay. RS 2017 950. Council Lady Virtue approves a grant from the Comcast Foundation to the Metro Finance Department in gratitude for the participation of Metro employees in the 16th annual Comcast Cares Day. RS 2017 951, Council Lady Virtue and Elrod approves an education and outreach grant from the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation to Metro Public Works. RS 2017 952, Council Lady Virtue appropriates funds from the United States Department of Health and Human Services to the Metro Action Commission to support the Head Start program to fund a comprehensive child development program to, for disadvantaged children and approves two amendments to the grant contract, RS 2017 953, Council Lady Virtue. Approves an amendment to a contract between the Tennessee Department of Health and the Metro Board of Health for reimbursement of a portion of the expenses for each autopsy performed in Davidson County. RS 2017 954, Council Lady Virtue. 
approves a contract between the Metro Board of Health and Monroe Harding Incorporated to hire one part-time administrative assistant for the Adverse Childhood Experiences Nashville Initiative, RS 2017-955, O'Connell L. Rodden Bedney, authorizes CityTap Nashville Inc. Uh, LLC to construct and maintain an aerial encroachment at 205 De Mumbrian Street. RS 2017-956, O'Connell, El Bednay, and Elrod authorizes House at Sobro LLC to construct and install um, and maintain an, an aerial encroachment at 535 Fifth Avenue South. RS 2017-957, I'm sorry, RS 2017-958, uh, Alan Bednay and Elrod authorizes 1221 Partners LLC to construct, install, and maintain an aerial encroachment at 2301 12th Avenue South. RS 2017-959, uh, Council Lady Haywood approves the election of notaries public for Davidson County. RS 2017-960, Shulman, Allen, and others request the Metro Department of Parks and Recreation to plan a foster rec recognition of Nashville and Davidson County's relationship with its sister cities. Not sure I read that right. RS 2017-961, Van Rees and Syracuse recognizes the Nashville Songwriters Association International as it celebrates its 50th anniversary. All right. That brings us to committee reports. Council Lady Vircher, Budget and Finance. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval 1440 against for RS 2017 939 through RS 2017 944. We also recommended approval for 1440 against RS 2017 948 through not RS 2017 954. Thank you, Council Lady. Council Lady, come more health hospitals. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Health, Hospitals, and Social Services recommended resolution 2017-952-64, none against. Resolution 2017-953 was recommended, 6-4, zero against. And resolution 2017-954 was recommended for approval, 6-4, with zero against. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Council. Councilman Roten, Parks, Library, and Recreation. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Parks, Library, and Recreation voted RS 2017943 uh, through 945. We approved 740 against. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Bidney, Planning and Zoning. Yeah. Uh, can't tell if this thing is on. Uh, the Planning uh, Committee uh, recommended approval 12 to 0 on. 939, 942, 955, 956, 957, 958, 942, 943, and 944, and 947. Thank you, Councilman. Councilor Lee Roberts, Public Safety, Beer and Regulated Beverages. I think all of mine were pulled. Mine's 20. Is that right? I believe so. Was nine forty six nine forty seven was not. What's nine forty seven? Oh, public safety voted six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilor. And nine twenty six was not either. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Public That's safety right. voted six in favor, zero against. Thank you, Councilor. Uh, Councilman Elrod, public safety. Uh, Council Councilor Vircher, you seeking recognition. Yeah, apologies, Vice Mayor. Didn't provide the report for RS 2017-926. I thought that was pulled off of consent. Um, budget and Finance recommended approval 1440 against. Thank you. And also for RS 2017-946-1440 against. Thank you. Councilman Elrod, Public Safety. Public I'm sorry, works. Public Works. Public Works recommended approval of resolutions 939 through... 956, 10 in favor, zero against, and also resolution 958, 10 in favor, zero against. Okay. Council Lady Haywood, rules confirmations, public elections. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, rules reviewed resolutions 259, 
260, 261, and 262, and we approved all four, seven, four, and zero against. So we move for approval. I think you misspoke there. 959 is in not. 259. 959. Nine. Is it? Or maybe we have a misprint on your agenda. Yeah. Okay. You had four items on your on your agenda. They were all approved by that report. Is that right? That's correct. Thank you, Council Lady. Thank you, Councilman Hager. Uh, traffic and parking. Thank you. Uh, traffic and parking on RS two zero one seven dash nine four two approved. Four, four, and zero again. Councilman Hager, can you move for approval of the consent agenda? Move for approval of the consent agenda. That's a proper motion. It's been seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We adopt the consent agenda. The following uh, resolutions are not on the consent agenda. RS 2017-910, Councilman Sledge, Council Lady Vircher, authorizes the issuance of public facility revenue improvement bonds by the Sports Authority, authorizes certain revenues as security for the bonds, and an official statement to be distributed in connection with the sale of the bonds. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, we'll start with the committee reports, please. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance uh, approved the substitute as amended 10 for, 3 against, uh, 2 not voting. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Syracuse, Codes Fair, Farmers Market. We did not have a quorum. Okay. Councilman, Councilman Hurt, uh, Convention, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. The Convention, Tourism, and Public Entertainment Facilities Committee voted uh, substitute 4 for, and 1 against. Thank you, Councilor Councilman. Thank you, thank you Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move the substitute at this time. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. Councilman Cooper, Councilman Pulley, do you seek recognition on this before we adopt the substitute or after? Okay. Councilman, thank you, Councilman. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. You're now on your bill as substituted. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. As, as the body knows, we have a lot of amendments that have been offered. Uh, I believe what the Vice Mayor intends, what I intend as well, is that all amendments that have been offered, that if anyone wishes to offer them, that they be discussed. The motion that I'm going to make is for three amendments that were placed on the substitute bill and passed within committee. So I will, I will offer those three amendments in one motion and we can, I believe, have discussion on those amendments. Uh, I will give a very brief explanation, but I'm happy for others. And then we, I believe, we'll proceed from there. Um, so my motion would be to offer amendments I, M, and Q uh, to, the, to the substitute. Okay. Uh, there's a motion to amend adding, I, uh, adding amendments I, M, and Q. Just so everybody's on the same page, I'm going to ask... Uh, Mr. Jameson, if he will give a brief recitation of what I, M, and Q uh, essentially do. Amendment I, initially proposed by Councilman O'Connell, would revise Section 7K, providing that Council must receive a detailed staging, um, sorry, providing that uh, the stadium construction contractors are to furnish to the Sports Authority certified copies of payroll records with monthly reports to the Metro Council. Amendment M, uh, initially submitted by Councilman Mendez, would revise Section 7D6 and require the team lease not be transferable without written consent of the Metro government, that the team lease will provide customary enforcement and remedy provisions if no successor guarantee is provided, and that the team lease will provide the successor guarantee a uh, reasonable time to cure its failure to provide a successor guarantee or allow the team to provide equivalent protections. Lastly, it would specify that the term stadium construction also includes the infrastructure work directly related to the stadium, that is the utilities, sidewalks, public plaza, et cetera. 
Amendment Q was initially offered by Councilman Elrod. I believe he intends that it be supplanted by Amendment R. Both are similar. Amendment R would remove the inducement paragraph in the recitals of the original uh, resolution, but nevertheless include a recital that calls the 10-acre development an important integral part of this resolution. It would then amend Section 9 to specify that the lease for the 10 acres is subject to first the council approval of the resolution approving the lease and also approval of the site plan as part of an SP zoning uh, regulation by this council. And those are the amendments. Thank you, Mr. Jamison, Mr. Vice Mayor. So what I would like to do is move those three amendments and I would request when the late filed amendment is brought up by Councilman Elrod, I would ask the body to consider and pass that amendment. As Mr. Jamison explained, that amendment would supplant Amendment Q. I am moving Amendment Q, quite frankly, just in case. So with that, I renew my motion. I'm going to see if I can't clean that up for you just a little bit. That's just fine. Um, <laughs> so there's Q and R. N nobody wants Q anymore, right? Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> I believe we want R instead of Q. Right. Yeah. Is there a, R is a late file amendment. Is there objection in the body to, to R being considered? I see no objection. Would you, uh, would you amend your motion? Absolutely. Vice Mayor, I amend my motion for amendments I, M, and R. There's a motion to approve um, amendments I, M, and R. Is there discussion? It's properly second. Is there discussion? I have four people seeking recognition. Uh, is anybody seeking recognition on those three amendments? If you are, raise your hand. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, uh, the floor is still yours, Councilman. For purposes of discussion, I move the substitute as amended. There's a motion to approve the substitute as amended. Uh, it's been properly seconded. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, before we start, I have a point of order. Um, the CIB has only $150 million in revenue bonds listed, the CIB that we passed last June. This resolution authorizes considerably more than that, and there are no GEO bonds listed for this project in the CIB, but this resolution authorizes $50 million of GEO bonds. Um, don't we have to amend the CIB before authorizing, and are we ignoring the, the process or the spirit set out for this in the charter, and isn't there a legislative cure set out in the charter, and why wouldn't we be following that? I'm going to ask for clarification both from the attorney for the council and from the legal director on that before we proceed. Mr. Jamison. The uh, capital improvements budget is addressed in section 6.13 of the charter. Um, it does provide in the second paragraph that the council shall not authorize an expenditure for the construction of any building um, that is not within the CIB. So I think the first question is whether or not this resolution is actually authorizing an expenditure. And I believe the administration would maintain that it is not, that it is instead authorizing conditionally the sports authority to issue revenue bonds. So I, I, I submit that their position would be it just does not trigger um, a CIB amendment. Um, having said that, the CIB can be amended um, after our adoption of it in June. Um, at any point during the year uh, with a two-thirds vote, assuming this provision is triggered. But as I read the resolution, it's not authorizing an expenditure. It's simply um, conditionally approving a sports authority issuance of revenue bonds. But I defer to Mr. Cooper. I agree. So the, from, a, from a, a, a point of order, uh, I, would, I would find that the, the resolution is not out of order. Okay. Councilman. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. And for clarifying that point, because we struggle with the CIB, everybody in this group very uh, in June quite a bit. And so I think it's important to uh, respect that document. Uh, when items come up. 
from it. Thank you. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. Are we on the bills amended? And we have no further amendments to add at this point? But there are offered. there are other amendments. I, I think that are properly before the council. It's up to uh, the proponent of those amendments to move for their adoption. Okay. Well, I'll uh, move as if we're moving on the bill as amended, uh, and I want to make this statement in support of the bill as amended. Uh, I've heard from concern, some concerns uh, about why the city should be involved in assisting the funding of a private venture such as this, uh, and we are involved because of the value that this brings to our city both intrinsically and economically. Uh, I'll give you a couple figures that I've uh, come up with. According to Forbes, Forbes, which I consider to be a pretty reputable source here, um, the average MLS team is currently worth $223 million, which is up 20% from the previous year. The league also just negotiated a six-year extension with Adidas worth $700 million which equals $117 million per year. That represents a really nice revenue stream and is five times more valuable than their previous apparel deal with Adidas. And that also, according to Forbes, that's worth about 30% more than the NHL's current apparel, apparel deal themselves. So I think that's a pretty strong indicator of what a rapid rise this league is currently undertaking. And I think the marriage with Nashville will be good because we have also demonstrated quite a lot of success in uh, the pro teams who have entered into agreements with us here. Uh, so I think that's a clear indicator that uh, this is gonna be uh, looked at as a pretty successful venture and uh, those are pretty staggering economic figures. The ownership group's also gonna pay $150 million uh, as a franchise fee and put $25 million cash into this deal. In addition, they'll enter into a long-term obligation to make a $9 million lease payment to the city and from revenue sources associated with the project, uh, pay an additional $14 million, which honors the debt, the debt obligation that they, uh, they were gonna have on these revenue bonds that the city's gonna issue. Um, there have been questions about what happens if the team folds or the league goes away. And I think these figures associated with the MLS shows that uh, 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 we have mitigated that possibility quite a lot. And I'm sure that the administration strongly considered this when they uh, entered into this agreement with uh, the MLS or the ownership group, uh, uh, excuse me, I misstated that, the ownership group for this project. As for the 10 acres, I don't view this as a sweetheart deal at all. The ownership group needs a revenue stream to convince the MLS that they'll be financially solvent enough to make this deal. And that's a part of that revenue stream that they see. You know, in my examination of that, uh, I listened to community members, I went to these fair board meetings and I've looked at this from the fair board's perspective and currently that property is not on the tax rolls. This deal will put it on the tax rolls and half of that money is gonna to go to the fairgrounds. You know, the fairgrounds and uh, fair boards in support of this. The team also plans on working diligently with Laura and the fair board to ensure the solvency of both of those entities. And I'm firmly convinced they'll do that. Also heard some concern about the flea market and I also understand that the Flea Market Vendors Association is in support of this agreement. Finally, as the stadium deals go, this really is somewhat of a standard bearer for those deals. You look at the Nissan Stadium, you look at the Bridgestone Arena, and you look at uh, First Tennessee Park, this deal is much better for us. I understand that those administrations had challenges that we don't have before us, but uh, you know, I really think this is a really solid deal for the city, and I would encourage you all to stand with me in support of this. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Mendez. I actually forgot my button was pressed. Um, briefly, I'm voting in favor of it. Um, the, I want to thank the team and the administration for um, helping uh, get some dozen and a half changes made that I requested. Um, I, I do want to make sure to say for 
people are listening for all the pros that Councilman Pulley um, laid out. I mean, there are a couple of risks that Metro should be clear-headed about if the, if the league folds, whether that's a 0.1%, a 1% chance, or a 10% chance, uh, Metro is at risk if the league folds. There are no individual guarantors, and we need to make sure that we balance all the pros that Councilman Pulley laid out with that as a negative. Um, and the other thing is the, the 10 acres. Um, I, I mean, I do wish that it had been um, handled differently, that there was some way to truly value what the land is worth to the team. Um, we've got an appraisal about what it's worth vacant without a soccer stadium there. We really don't have the foggiest idea what the land is worth to the team. And, um, you know, we, we also have issues about uh, uh, how minority participation is going to work um, going forward. Um, we've got other legislation that's going to come before us. We'll have to approve that will give us a chance to discuss some of these things. But on balance, um, the, I think the, for me, the pros that Councilman Pulley lay out for today outweigh the negatives, so I'm going to vote for it. Thank you. Councilman Elrod. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I've got, uh, I'd like to make a motion to withdraw my remaining amendments, and I'd like to make a brief uh, comment. Um, you don't need to, to withdraw them. Just proceed. Okay. Um, when I started, when this uh, proposal was put forward to the council from the mayor's office and from the team, I had some reservations, uh, grave reservations about the 10 acres like a, like a lot of my colleagues. Um, but I came from it from a position of that I wanted to bring uh, an MLS team to Nashville to the fairgrounds while preserving the uses, functions, and what we all enjoy about going to the fairgrounds uh, for. Um, so in that vein, I've been somewhat critical, or I've been critical of the 10 acres, but in talking with the team, the administration, um, and not only on the 10 acres, but I think in several other aspects of this deal, um, because of the examination that the Metro Council has made of this deal, uh, we've made it a lot better proposal um, for the taxpayers, for the team, I believe, for, and, uh, and for us as Metro government. Um, I believe the uh, resolution, or excuse me, the amendment, uh, amendment, R um, puts in place an accountable uh, and open process as far as the 10 acres. Uh, we're going to have control over the site as far as uh, not only the zoning, but the council uh, will have final approval of the lease for those 10 acres. And while I still have concerns about uh, the 10 acres, some of the uses, and what will be in the lease, um, I am confident uh, in us examining that and getting a, uh, a good deal and talking with the administration and the, uh, and the team. Um, and I think, uh, there are tr I think there are two ways uh, this resolution shows how, um, and, this, and how it's been amended, that it is different from some of the other deals, is that we are, um, the lead owner of the team is a gentleman that lives here in Nashville that, we, that, is, very, that is accessible to us um, and who um, is partnering with us. And I think there is a certain step that we have to take as far as the guarantees and others and trusting um, his uh, leadership of the team as the, as, the as the lead team owner. But I think there's also a, a certain amount of trust that the team now has in Metro government and certainly I think in this council that those 10 acres are gonna come back to the Metro council as far as approval for the lease and for um, the zoning uh, I'm talking and so that will be done through the Metro council but most importantly the neighbors that will be there um, in Councilman Sledge's district. So I appreciate the team and the administration working on that amendment um, and that compromise on the 10 acres, and I'll be supporting the resolution. Thank you. Councilman Shulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, members of the council. Um, I, too, appreciate the, the scrutiny that uh, I think the members of the council uh, went through in terms of trying to arrive at this decision. I think they have spent a tremendous amount of time analyzing this very carefully. And I'm listening to the comments, and um, I think people's concerns were addressed and gotten to the right place, and I think we are much more comfortable um, with, this, um, with this deal. Now, I had a couple of questions I've asked them before, but just to get them on the record, uh, and these may be directed at the administration. Um, concerns about fees, parking fees, I've asked that before. I want to make sure that whatever the fairgrounds has been collecting before continues to get collected. And so I guess if it's okay, I would direct that to Mr. Riebling. I, it's important. I mean, I think it's important to all of us. We want to make sure that the, the fairgrounds understands the rules, understands what's happening, 
and they don't get shortchanged. Councilman, yes, the, the fairgrounds will continue to get all the parking revenue that they've historically gotten. Uh, the only revenue, parking revenue from stadium events, the soccer games, would go to the team. Uh, and so from a financial standpoint, the fairgrounds uh, is whole on, on those aspects. Uh, and actually, um, over time, we'll actually get more money because of the uh, commitment to put half of the uh, property tax money back to, to fund fair, the fairgrounds operation. So we think at the end of the day, not only uh, will the fairgrounds be financially more viable, uh, from that revenue stream, but will also be more viable both uh, financially and marketable by having the new buildings and basically uh, uh, new structures there to attract more uh, more events and more visitors. So um, we think it is a net very much a positive uh, for the fairgrounds. Okay. All right, thank you. The second question is, and I asked this before, the 10 acres involved. Obviously lots of discussions on that. Because of the nature of it, it's going to require, we believe, an SP zoning that those 10 acres are going to have to all come back, not part of it, but all of it is going to have to require a zoning change. It's all going to be coming back to this council. Any land that the developers seek to develop within the 10 acres would have to come back to the council as part okay. of that same SP. Yes, sir. All right. And I will tell you, uh, I think a lot of us have had different discussions with different people. Uh, the folks I've talked to, uh, Mr. Ingram, folks on this team, um, have indicated that they are willing to work with everyone, neighborhood groups and so forth, to make sure that this blends into the neighborhood and that it blends into the fairgrounds and that people who use the speedway, people who are parts of this thing are all involved in this discussion. Obviously, this council is going to be involved as well, but I think there's a real commitment and we're looking to that to make sure that this all works for everybody, that it works for everybody involved. Um, the last question is just a commitment. Uh, I know scheduling and things like that, but obviously with the charter the way it is, I want to make sure that people understand that the things that are going on on the fairgrounds right now are going to continue to go on. That's a requirement and that's going to hold. Without question. Okay. That is correct. So after a lot of soul searching, I can vote for this as well. Um, you know, in the end, um, Lots of people came out, talked to us, and said this is a good thing for Nashville. They're willing to support. Um, and, um, you know, if this thing passes, um, then hopefully we all get together. It's a good thing for the city. Lots of diversity involved. I really like that. And who knows, we may get this bid after all, and then we can all be um, proud of what we got. Thank you. Councilman John Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I would like to offer, um, it was voted on by committee uh, yesterday, um, Amendment A. Um, it's about the 10 acres. I think that's important for the public discussion to have about the 10 acres. Could I um, ask, uh, could I ask uh, Mr. Jamison to explain what Amendment A does? Please. Amendment A, initially offered by Councilman Elrod, redacts the references to the 10 acres in private development and adds a recital clause that no inducement is necessary beyond what's already included within the resolution. Okay, and I, I, I would also um, um, like to withdraw Amendment H, but with a quick comment, which it was uh, Amendment H, if Mr. Jamison would brief us on what H is. Um, absolutely. A council must receive a detailed staging and demolition plan within 30 days of resolution uh, of approval or by December 31st, whichever occurs first. And my brief comment on H is uh, I'm happy to withdraw it if when it finally comes up, the demolition plan, no one says, well, it's too late. <laughs> so uh, it goes from being too early to too late, but it will come up, the demolition plan requiring 27 votes, and I think we need to anticipate that, and we don't need to um, pretend that at that time it was, it was too late and you shouldn't have brought it up. So, but back to um, Amendment A, and if I may, it's very important that we discuss the gift of the 10 acres. Public land is a public trust, and we have to preserve what we have. And this went from being a soccer deal to really being a real estate deal. And it's not enough for taxpayers to guarantee a $250 million stadium debt. We've been asked literally to give away $30 million of public land 
to help the owners with their returns. Now, giving this land away isn't about activation of the site, it's about harvest. And who gets the benefits of gentrification? The community or the developers? And in this case, the fair community and the public loses. The fairgrounds is the most visited site in Nashville, 1.6 million visitors last year. That is three times the number that the stadium will bring. But it's dilapidated because we never invested in it. The fair visitors were not important to us. They were occupying land that was just too valuable for them to have. We let the fairgrounds run down, waiting for this harvest, but this harvest is not for the fair and its visitors, but it's going to private development. In Nashville, it seems, once public land becomes really valuable, the public can't have it, and it has to go out to development. There really wasn't really a process here, no design, no community benefit agreement, no master plan, just the intent to subsidize more than just guaranteeing the debt and providing the land under the stadium, but juicing the owner's returns as well. Now, we could have done $25 million in fair improvements years ago. We could have given racing a lease that encouraged reinvestment, but then we wouldn't be having this excuse to activate the site by literally giving it away. The only investment idea in the past has been fair park, but it's really the fair parking lot that was done in advance of this plan to provide extra parking for this harvest moment. Now, if we kept it, the value of these 10 acres would be enough to bring NASCAR back to Nashville and the income to support the greatest fairgrounds ever, including the Stalker Stadium as a tenant. But it's going the value instead to the soccer owners instead. Those who nurtured the fair all these years, those who voted in the referendum to require a higher standard for considering mixed use development you will now be second-class citizens on your own site. The winners in this gentrification scheme is not you. And this is not about the sport of soccer. It's about the owners capturing all of the economic activity from the former fairgrounds for themselves, not just at the stadium, but at now at their adjacent mixed-use development site. And no actual need for the 10 acres has been demonstrated. There's a motion to adopt Amendment A. Is there a second? There's a motion, is there, I have six other people seeking recognition. Does anybody seek recognition on Amendment A? If you do, raise your hand. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to table Amendment A. There's a motion to table Amendment A. That limits debate on Amendment A to Councilman Sledge and Councilman Cooper. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. If we could do a point of order, could we get a committee report on this amendment? Mm, Councilor Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended indefinite deferral, uh, nine, four, uh, five against. Councilor Hurt, did your committee consider that amendment, Amendment A? Okay, there was no consideration in that committee. Thank, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Um, so regarding the regarding the development side, I'd like to make a few points, um, some in general and some based on the comments made. Um, as I think everybody received last week, at, when these offers are being made, when these bids are being put in from around the country, MLS is looking for an activated mixed use site. Uh, that's not my words. That was the letter that came from President Abbott of MLS just late last week. And so I think that when we talk about this being um, termed in a certain way, this is, not, this is not something that's just trivial. It's pretty integral to the, to the activation of the site. Uh, the portion that's being considered for mixed use redevelopment currently is parking lots. It is not displacing anyone except the mobile DUI booking station that occurs there every weekend and throughout the week in my neighborhood. Um, I, I take a little bit, I, I do not agree at all um, regarding if this is a gift or that we're preserving what we have. Currently what we have is underused and many times unused asphalt parking lot that sits in our urban core while we tell each other and know that we have issues with affordable housing in our city, we have issues with local businesses and small businesses and DBE businesses in our community, and yet we let this land sit unused and quite frankly unfettered. And so 
I think the proposal that's put forth is one that is very thoughtful and, as has been mentioned by previous speakers, will come back to us. And I make the commitment to several members tonight, and I make it here on the floor, the rezoning of this property, I will carry it because I'm the council member for this district. I will not make any decision unilaterally. I will ask each and every one of you to participate this in this because I know that we have not done a great job in the past in the city in fulfilling our promises, especially when it comes to DBE participation. I think that this is a great opportunity to do that. I think it's a great opportunity to provide the affordable and workforce housing that I think every one of us wants to see, and I've been told time and again by my colleagues that they want to see it in the urban core. This is it, guys. This is on a transit line. It's a line that's projected for light rail should the referendum pass. It is one that it would, be, would be transformational for the area and, quite frankly, would push back a little bit on the gentrification that has occurred in the area. We all as a body voted to do a very similar deal when we took two acres on 12th uh, Avenue South in Wedgwood, did a ground lease and did 100% affordable workforce housing at, with a private developer as our partner. That is projected to break ground before the end of the year. And let me tell you, it's not, it was not easy. But this council made the decision to do that because it meets the priorities of the city. And I think that's really the point I want to make. We have an opportunity within this project to not just create a soccer stadium. We have the opportunity to fulfill and exceed the priorities that we put forth as a city. And what I've heard, and I think what many of you have heard from our constituents over the years, is that they want to be able to see affordable workforce housing in the core. They want to be able to see small businesses supported. And they want to be able to see an inclusive city, one that's made for all of us. I can't tell you how many times we've heard is it the it city for all of us? And it's a fair and valid question. I think this is a great opportunity for us as the council to take heed from our constituents and set forth the priorities that they have given to us and do so in a unique way. I think every analysis that's been made of this has said, look, this is different. This is something, this is something that we haven't seen before. And perhaps, and I hope that tonight, uh, we will be pursuing that opportunity. So with that, I would ask again, um, when we come to the time, that we table Amendment A. Thank you. Councilman Cooper. Um, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'll be brief. Um, the actual need for the 10 acres has never been demonstrated. And there has never been an appraisal on the 10 acres, as Councilman Mendez was pointing out, really that would accurately value it under these conditions. The stadium alone in the stadium's economic impact study is projected to make over $63 million in direct revenue from ticket sales and concessions. $63 million alone for the stadium. Now that's a huge number, and as Councilman Pulley pointed out, the teams seem to be <coughs> rolling in money already, but we have never come to terms with why this 10 acres is actually needed. We can't see the financial model of what the owners will make. We can give the land, but of course we can't see the model of what they're going to make. And we can't actually examine their returns and what they're expected to be. We can only help them have more. Well, this is not working as an appropriate safeguard for the public interest if public land is given because people want more. Of course they will. And thank you, Mr. Uh, Vice Mayor. I yield the balance of my time. Just procedurally so everybody understands, Councilman Cooper moved Amendment A. Uh, it was properly seconded. Councilman Sledge has moved that to the table. Um, if the motion to table is adopted. We'll move on to other amendments or to the bill as amended. So if, you, if you're against Amendment A, you're going to vote yes with Councilman Sledge right now. If you'd like to vote on Amendment A, you're going to vote no right now. All in favor of the motion to table, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Madam Clerk, if you'll open the machine.
Councilman Hastings. Vice Mayor, could you repeat what you just said? No, you, I, that's you, not possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I only say it once, Councilman. Because uh, <laughs> I, we are confused. Okay. If, okay. I, I will repeat it, I, not verbatim, but I will repeat it generally. Councilman Sledge has moved to table. If you're with Councilman Sledge, you're voting yes, and you're voting yes to table because you do not want to consider Amendment A. If you'd like to consider Amendment A, you're gonna vote no on the motion to table right now. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine and tally the vote. I'm sorry, there you go. 26 in favor of the motion to table, 10 against, three abstain. Motion passes. Uh, Council Lady Mina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. So are we now bill as amended? We're, we're still on the bill as substituted, and then we have the three amendments that Councilman Sledge proposed, which were adopted. So as of right now, uh, substituted, amended, and we are considering as whole. Correct. Unless I want to introduce some amendment. And unless which I am you not. or somebody else wants to. But <laughs> which I am not. So I would like to speak on the bill as substituted and amended. And I understand I, I might be the just minority. Uh, because of the procedure and the spirit of the fairgrounds uh, referendum, who voted the fairgrounds to be consistent, existed as all the usage, a uh, race car, a uh, flea market, a uh, fair, and all the other uses, uh, overwhelming uh, citizens of Davidson County spoke to keep the fairgrounds as they know of it, 70% to 30%. So I feel in this process by approving this resolution tonight, we will uh, kind of inadvertently ignore those voice. And uh, yes, this resolution will just adopt the final uh, financial portion assurance of a bond, which is if certain conditions are met. However, we are having soccer field, and we are giving away, practically, a uh, 10 plus field. And so by doing so, it will dramatically alter the fairground. And if the voters of Davidson <coughs> County is agreeing with altering uh, the fairground. Of course, nobody want to leave it, you know, as dilapidated as it is, and everybody want to uh, upgrade it. And we are issuing fifty million dollars geo bond. If we were to upgrade a fairground, we can utilize that fifty million dollars geo bond if we want to. But instead, uh, we are choosing the soccer field. And I have nothing against the soccer or MLS, and I do wish all the success, and I do understand enthusiasm. But however, a process and all the spirit of the resolution, uh, referendum is very, very important to me. And besides, uh, you know, 90-10 deal, as far as numbers concerned, I really don't see 90-10 private public deal. And it, it is right now, uh, in the low ball case, uh, on, will make at least 45 million from ticket sales and merchandise and so forth. Yet, we are asked to guarantee just in case we uh, sales Ticket sales and merchandise tax does not reach to four million. Lowball case, probably up to 1.65 million for the first five years. If uh, the attendance does not meet 87%, if it's much lower, we are asked to put more money. And while uh, team <coughs> owner will be making for 
ask you to uh, consider uh, those spirit of the fairground supporter. And it would be nice to have those kind of conversation in the front end. If everybody's agree with, yes, we embrace soccer. We, yes, we are fine with altering, dramatically altering uh, fairground. I'll be OK with it. But I really don't feel like we had that conversation at the right moment. So for that, I would love to defy it. But uh, probably I'm the minority. So if we have to vote, I would vote no tonight because of that reason. Council members, uh, we had a, uh, some sort of glitch in the system. So I've lost everybody who was waiting to speak. So please go back and hit your button again if you'd still like to speak. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a quick question and then a comment, please. Um, the substitute as amended states that we'll be handing over plus or minus 10 acres. What exactly constitutes plus or minus? It could be. It could be 9.98 .9 or 10.01. I mean, it's. But not like 12 or 13. Correct. OK, thank you. Um, so I, you know, I'd like to commend the, the administration and, and, and the sponsor on the work they've done on this deal. It's certainly a step up from other stadium deals and also uh, certainly all the passionate supporters of it. Um, I think it's worth pointing out yet again that we're handing over 10 acres of great real estate, tens of millions of dollars of real estate to billionaires. Uh, we could use that money to build schools, plural, um, build sidewalks, um, give teachers and firefighters and police officers a pay raise, but instead we're giving away tens of millions of dollars of land to billionaires. Right. Now, this, this is going to pass tonight. and. This is going to pass tonight, and if it does, I'll certainly be there helping to ensure that whatever I can do to make sure the project is a success. Um, so I guess I'm just saying if anybody has 10 acres of really nice land they'd like to give me, I'd be happy to find someone to develop it. Thank you. Councilor Gilmore. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor. Uh, I rise uh, just to really kind of focus on the DB, and I had spoken with uh, Council Member Sledge um, earlier, you know, prior to the meeting. And so I just want to make sure, because I've been on the council for uh, quite a few years now, and so when we have big projects like this, we always get excited. Anyone can check my record. I've always voted for them. But in the end, the DBE part never quite turns out like we expected. As a matter of fact, it's been quite a disappointment. So I know that I can no longer um, continue to support big projects that do not support African Americans. And I was looking at the um, Economic Policy Institute analysis of unemployment, and it shows that it's uh, 4.1 for whites in the state of Tennessee, and it's 9.5 for black workers. And then if you look at Davidson County, it shows that it's 4.1 for whites, and it's 12.5. And if we talk about specifically contractors that have worked on these large projects, it's less than 1% that have had these projects. So I really want to hold uh, the mayor's office uh, to what they say and continue to work with them. I know that Ms., uh, the dir director of finance has issued a letter that says she is firmly committed to making sure that we reach the 30%. Um, as it relates to our DBE goals. But I am really concerned about African Americans because we have found out in the past that DBE could be small businesses, uh, it could be women businesses, but African Americans seem to be losing on this. So it's a couple of things that I just really want to focus on that I've heard in the past from African American uh, contractors and business persons that have participated. Some of it is when it comes time to reimburse for payrolls, it is held too long and it puts such a financial crunch on the businesses that they go under and they have to pull out. So it needs to be a quick turnaround on that. The second is bonding capacity. Sometimes it's so large and the project needs to be broken down into smaller pieces. So I hope that that would ha happen as well. 
And then it's been shared that they're not given adequate notice to participate. So in other words, if it's like two or three weeks, they may get it a week before. And sometimes the major prime contractors will list their names and it's not been verified and it'll count towards points. So we really wanna kind of watch these type of things and continue uh, to work with the, the director of finance and with the mayor. And I believe the mayor is sincere, but I believe we really have to hold the developers accountable because there are a lot of constituents in Nashville and as it relates to African-Americans, we are being left behind. And that's a particular constituency I represent. And so I just have to acknowledge that and we're going on record as several of the council members that said that they will work with me and we're gonna work together. We have to move the Dow. We cannot continue to support big projects in this city and African Americans be left behind. And we know for a fact, it's not talk. They've gotten 1%. Um, according to that study by Griffin and Strong on some of these major projects when it was supposed to be 30%. So we, I'm going to hold the mayor to it. I believe uh, Director uh, Talia Lomax, but we need to get more things in, the, in writing and we need a commitment, a sincere commitment from the developers as well that they are committed to helping moving African Americans towards those goals of 30% and not doing some of this, we create some, th some mechanisms and then you go another way with it. So um, I stand to say that I will support this project, hoping at the end that the new needle will be moved and the citizens of Nashville, we can truly say that it's a it, uh, city for all. Thank you. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor, and appreciate uh, all the comments from my colleagues. Uh, do just wanna quickly say, um, I'm very excited to get another professional sports team in town. It's, uh, it's been a little bit of a somber mood tonight, but I uh, hope that some of my colleagues share that excitement. Um, I know we had a lot of concerns along the way. Uh, I think uh, the mayor's office and the, and the team did a good job. One of the big ones early on was the cost overruns. I think we learned from First Tennessee, uh, and we were able to get that in here that, that the, the cost overruns would be covered. Um, I know the 10-acre piece gave everybody a lot of, of uh, heartache. Um, one thing I did want to mention on the floor was, uh, and Councilmember Sledge has, has said he would, he would do this in the zoning, is that we get a good bit of affordable housing. Uh, one thing I think we've learned across the country is if you, first of all, these deals do happen. The city and private developers do work these deals, and every time they do, there's always an affordable housing guarantee. Um, I'd like to see at least a minimum of 25% affordable housing in the residential component. I know it's going to be a mixed-use component. Uh, I think they could do better than that, and I think Councilman Member Sledge agrees with me. Uh, but I think that's what we need to push for, and I do want to put that out there publicly, that we need a strong component of affordable housing uh, as we work this deal. Uh, and I think it's great that it is coming back to us for zoning. I think that was just a key, a key point in getting a lot of you to vote for this. Uh, so again, uh, I'm very excited to support this tonight. I think we need to keep an eye on those things. Also, wanted to mention, real quick, last thing, Amendment I. Uh, that Co Council Member O'Connell, I believe it was Amendment I, offered. Um, we need to, to do better uh, with labor and workforce uh, in these types of development. I know we talk about it all the time. I think that's a great amendment uh, that we have on this for transparency. We know where the jobs are going to be uh, and how much they're paying, and we need to continue to push that forward. Thank you for your support this evening. Councilman Scott Davis. Just echoing what my distinguished colleague, Council Lady at Council Lady at Large, Erica Gilmore. The DBE commitment is awful. And I know it's harsh, but it's the truth. And we have a vote coming up that needs 27. We gotta see a lot of work here. Okay? We have a lot of it. You have people that are suffering in this community. You've seen the participation of African-American contractors plummet. And then you see a rise in issues with children in the community. I wonder why. So this is going to pass tonight. You know, I've committed to voting for it, but we have future votes coming up. And as you're seeing right now is you're seeing slowly members of a strong and intelligent caucus, which I was blessed enough to be elected president of, slowly falling back and not voting for certain things and being a little bit more critical. So I'm asking, I know, I tr I'm trusting the fact, 
you know, I, I believe our mayor is sincere. I definitely believe Ms. Lomax is sincere working towards that commitment. But with the 27 coming up, we need to see some proof. We need to see some writing in a wall. And I'm asking a lot of you to stand with this. If the caucus is not satisfied with this coming up, in 20, with this 27 vote coming up, I need you to back us. You know, I love soccer. You know, go Chelsea. But right now, <laughs> but right now, in some cases, we are this close in economic collapse in certain communities right now. We don't see it. We face it every day when we go out in our communities. And I know we're like, yeah, we're going to fix it next time. Yeah, we're going to fix it next time. Yeah, we're going to do this great DBE thing, and we're going to leave, leave out, you know, let me make sure I get this right. Federally approved apprenticeship programs. They're important also. Sometimes the other words are bad words, so I had to clean it up a little bit. So we're going to move this tonight. But the day is coming very soon. And it's not a threat. It's not a promise. It's just a fact. You know, that there, we're going to see some difficult votes coming ahead. And there's going to be a lot of rough legislation. But if we work together in the spirit of this great city, we can get this DBE thing fixed. And less than 2% is unheard of. It should be unacceptable. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. Councilman Henderson. Thank you, thank you Vice Mayor. Um, I rise to share with my, my colleagues and my constituents that um, I, too, shared your concerns uh, about the plus or minus uh, 10 acres. Um, I would have liked to have supported uh, Amendment A. Um, I did vote against the indefinite deferral of that yesterday um, and then uh, voted against tabling that here uh, this evening. Um, I voted against this in budget and finance yesterday um, because we did not consider Amendment A, and I felt that Amendment Q uh, was not sufficiently strong in that the discussion of the 10 acres was just in the recital. Um, so I want to thank Councilman Elrod for bringing Amendment R. Um, because that gives me more confidence that we will uh, look at that um, that is subject to our approval and uh, the zoning, uh, SP zoning process, and that that is in now um, the body of the resolution. I had a similar question um, to that of Councilman Rosenberg about the plus or minus 10 acres, and so I want to just ask the administration again that, you know, plus or minus might mean 9.2 or 8.7, um, but you confirm with us here today that that won't be 11, 12, 13, et cetera. Okay, I'm seeing a nod of yes. Um, also, I would appreciate confirmation by the administration. I know there has been some concern um, in the, uh, uh, the walk and bike uh, community um, and those of us that, uh, that care about our parks that in uh, not kind of having a plan for this 10 acres, and uh, such a uh, multiplicity of uses on this site and the challenges with parking that the greenway um, that we have uh, indicated will be on this site will not be compromised in any way and that this greenway will remain open at all times during all events. We have had a challenge with this at our first Tennessee location. That greenway is closed when we have events um, so I just want to be clear as it relates to the planned development of this that the administration commits that the Greenway will remain a part of this and that it will not be closed at any time per that plan. Thank you. I see you acknowledging yes. Um, and so with that, um, despite my concerns, but with Amendment I, M, and R, so thank you to Councilman O'Connell. Um, and Councilman Mendez. Councilman Mendez did address very many of my concerns through his amendment and work with the administration. Um, with that, uh, I will share with my colleagues that I will be voting yes on this. Thank you. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I have a quick question for the administration just to follow up on some of the items. I know we have gotten a lot of information and assistance from the administration and some additional follow-up information from the team. 
the letter submitted by the team over the weekend, you know, kind of suggested uh, that affordable housing was a priority without really getting into specifics. I know we have a letter from Metro Finance uh, targeting some DBE goals. I, I don't know if the administration has a particular comment uh, to follow up on Councilman Davis's kind of uh, target of 25%. If there's a formal comment on a goal here uh, for the overall project in terms of what, what kind of affordable housing metrics we'd like to see associated with this project. Thank you. Councilman, I, I, I share, I think the administration shares your concerns on the affordable housing issue, something that we care about tremendously. And I, I think that the developers and the, and the owners of the team have been reluctant to put a number in because they're still working on a plan. But I'm, I'm very confident that uh, Councilman Sledge will, <laughs> through his community meetings and, and, and his process to run the zoning bill, will see to it that the SP includes the type of affordable housing that that we all want to see in our community. So, I I, I, I know that's vague and not giving not giving you a hard number. But I just can't give it to you because I don't know. But um, I, I guess I'm saying that uh, we're on the same page, and I think you'll be happy with the final result. Councilman Hager. First of all, I want to tell everybody that I'm probably one of the biggest sports fans in here. I have had a. PSLs with the Titans from the very beginning. I sported them from the beginning. All my children have played football, baseball, swimming, wrestling, everything. And I still support all the youth teams in my area in Old Hickory, and I will continue to do so. But at the same time, as Council Lady Mina Johnson spoke, we had a referendum during Mayor Dean's administration that we had 73, 74% of the voters indicate by voting in that referendum that we were to leave the fairgrounds as they were and leave them alone. So here we are tonight voting on a bond referendum to allow that all to be taken away from the voters. And my position would have been I'd prefer that this type of deal should have went to the voters in the first place, just like we did when the Titan Stadium came in here uh, 18 years ago and we voted to let the Titans come here and approve that referendum. And, and my position is very clear, though. I'm not against this stadium, but I'm against this 10 acres of land being given to the developers there because somebody said one day, they said, well, it's a 99-year lease. Well, whether it's a 99-year lease or a 20-year lease, it's still giving property to these developers in this situation. So for that reason, I've told everyone that I could not support this type of development unless that 10 acres was taken out of this proposition. Thank you. Councilman Benning. I never played soccer in Argentina, uh, which is weird because that's what we do. Uh, I started playing here in Nashville. I will go to play uh, on an over 30 league, then over 40 league, then I started getting injured and stopped playing. <laughs> Most of the people that I play with were like the people you see behind here. People from all backgrounds, all colors, all languages, just coming together, doing the beautiful game, just having a good time, doing something positive in the community. I really resent when people describe us as not being part of Nashville. I have friends your neighbors probably that like soccer, love soccer, enjoy playing it and watching it, and they are taxpayers in this city. And we deserve, after paying taxes all our lives, to have something that we enjoy and we want to see happen, and that is this stadium. We want it, I want it, they want it, and tens of thousands of Nashvillians want it. So I'm asking you for your support to give us something that we think that we have uh, being uh, supportive of other projects in the city. This is a project I want. Uh, Mr. Rivlin can tell you that since I got elected, uh, I was a pain in the butt to them, asking them that I wanted to see us doing more things with soccer, because I know, and I was surprised myself, because I had co-workers at my architectural firm, people I never expected that would like soccer. They would like to play soccer, just like I did. So this is really 
probably you don't talk to your neighbors about soccer, and so you don't know that they love it. But lots of us love soccer, and so please uh, vote for this legislation so we can really have something positive in the city that people can enjoy. And that will bring a lot of revenue, like the 100 extra million dollars we just got on the last couple of budgets, that was paid by people that came to the city to watch the hockey games or to go to the hockey towns or to invest in the city. We'll, this is going to be a good investment. We'll get a lot of revenue out of this, and it will help us do the type of things that we're going to continue doing, like giving those races to the teachers and to the police officers and so forth. So please, uh, I ask for your support. Thank you. Councilman Kendall. Am I on? Yes, sir. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record because uh, I'm going to repeat some of the things that uh, Councilman, Council Lady Gilmore, Scott Davis, Anthony Davis, and others who have, uh, have spoken. I've served in this community for over 30 some years in some capacity in a government agency or on a board, school board, council other agencies. And I agree that we keep hearing over and over promises that people in the African American community are going to get certain benefits from projects that have occurred in this city uh, that we funded. And it just doesn't happen. Uh, as uh, Council Lady Gilmour said, I think less than 1 percent, I believe less than 2.8 percent over the last three or four years have gone to minority businesses and, and projects that this city has been a part of. The other aspect is the affordable housing. We all, I think, recognize that most developers in this city want to get maximum dollars out of every piece of land that they, they have ownership of. Uh, I'm concerned that, and uh, Councilman Davis, Anthony Davis, mentioned 20 percent, I believe, was it 20 percent? 25 percent. I'm concerned that we need to have those figures before we vote on this. Maybe not tonight. I, I think it's going to pass tonight. But when it comes back as an SP, uh, Scott, Scott Davis, you mentioned that it's not a threat, not a promise. But for me, it is a promise. I'm not going to vote for it. If it comes back to us and we don't have real commitment we don't have real promises that are going to be kept to ensure that this becomes an it city for everybody. Right now, it's not an it city for everybody. I heard uh, Councilman John Cooper mention gentrification on two or three different occasions. If this is just another effort to increase gentrification, I'm, I'm certainly not for that because we desperately need affordable and workforce housing in this community. The city has that property. Uh, we should be able to control aspect of, of what goes there. We should also be able to have some control on increasing the participation of minorities, especially African Americans, in the success of this city. Thank you. Councilman Pardew. Call for questions, please. Questions are being called. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. That brings us to uh, a vote on the bill on the resolution as substituted and amended. Madam Clerk, if you would open the machine. Before we before the the vote is announced, I would just like to ask uh, both compliment the public on their uh, participation both here and at the public hearing. Um, and for all the emails and comments that the members of the council have received. I would also like to ask you to reserve your reaction, either positive or negative, until you leave the room. You've heard me hit the gavel a couple of times. That's because we tried to maintain the decorum in this room um, for a lot of reasons, primarily because it allows us to move more quickly through the agenda. So, looks like everyone has voted. Madam Clerk, if you'd close the machine. And tally the vote. 31 in favor, six against, two abstain. Motion carries. That brings us to resolution RS 2017 920, Council Lady Vircher. Uh, 
And Council A. Roberts approves two agreements between the United States Department of Justice and the Metro Police Department to govern the, the participation of DEA, Nashville District Office, Task Force participants in the United States D Department of Justice Equitable Sharing Program. Council Lady Vercher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval 10 4 0 against. Well, Council A. Roberts. Public safety voted six in favor, zero against. Council Lee Varcher. I'm sorry, Council Lee, there you go. I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Do you mind if I take just a moment to let the chamber clear out? That's fine, Councilman. All right, Councilman. All right, thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Apologize for the delay there. That's um, right. And this is a little bit discordant of a transition, I realize, but as we consider this resolution, a bipartisan group of legislators and a broad-based group of law enforcement professionals have observed that the Department of Justice is moving in the wrong direction on criminal justice and policing. Just a few weeks ago, at the conclusion of the National Law Enforcement Summit on Crime, a number of current and former police chiefs, U.S. attorneys, and other officials specifically called on the President and Attorney General to focus on fighting violent crime, enact federal sentencing reform, increase resources for mental health and drug treatment, increase support for local community policing, and expand reentry programs to re reduce recidivism. I would rather that Nashville abide by these principles and follow the recommendations of a Department of Justice focused on reigniting a war on drugs that relies on aggressive policing with a clear intent of increasing mass incarceration. Simultaneously, we have a state commission exploring Tennessee's involvement in civil asset forfeiture. Our own district attorney has publicly expressed that he would prefer to see our enforcement apparatus involve criminal asset forfeiture only with proceeds returned to general funds. In light of all this context, I would encourage my colleagues to temporarily step away from a controversial federal program opposed nationally by the NAACP, ACLU, Institute for Justice, among others, while we explore other options that are as likely to deliver public safety. I wholeheartedly support our police force's efforts to reduce the impact of op the opioid epidemic in Nashville, and I'm committed to making sure they have the funding necessary to keep our community safe on Nashville's terms, but I will be voting no on RS-2017-920. Thank you. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I agree with Councilman O'Connell. This is, um, this partnership with the Federal Department of Justice brings in uh, very little money, about a hundred something thousand dollars a year. Um, we just spent 250 million, so that's a pretty small amount of money to get in bed with a um, an effort to really militarize uh, the war on drugs, which uh, you know certainly targets various communities. Um, the opposition to this, to civil asset forfeiture in general, is pan-partisan and pretty widespread. Um, so I'll just use a few seconds here to share a couple quotes. Uh, the National Association for the Advan Advancement of Color People calls for the termination of programs which condone and even reward civil asset forfeiture, including the so-called equitable sharing program, which is what we're doing right now. The Washington Times, a conservative paper, says, let's be clear on this one point. Civil asset forfeiture is an evil. It's not a pro-police program. It's a constitutional evil. The ACLU says civil asset forfeiture is tan tantamount to policing for profit. Senator Rand Paul says police, uh, people who are victims of civil forfeiture are often poor, African American or Hispanic, and people who can't afford an attorney to try to get the money that's taken from them by the government. 
The ACLU adds this move will be devastating for all Americans, but especially for communities of color who are already subjected to unconstitutional violations and over-policing. Senator Marco Rubio says civil asset forfeiture deprives innocent people of their property rights without due process. And the ACLU adds forfeiture has been deemed ineffective by the DOJ's own inspector general and over 80% of Americans want to get rid of this practice. This, uh, disapproving this resolution does not decrease our involvement in uh, trying to halt uh, the opioid epidemic or anything that the other resolution on this topic does tonight. All this does is say that if we want this money to support our efforts, we'll do it locally instead of selling our souls. Thank you. Councilman Pridemore. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I was hoping we, based upon the uh, committees, I wouldn't have to get up and speak on this, but uh, this has been vetted actually four times. Two budget and finance committee uh, discussions where it was voted and unanimously approved after uh, much uh, debate and also information that was provided for to all the uh, questions that uh, that was brought up. Also in the Public uh, Safety Committee, there were uh, at least five, five uh, uh, members there that was ready and answered any questions. It was also vetted in two different, in two separate times, and both times um, it was voted uh, unanimously in approval. Uh, now, I, I understand that a lot of things, you know, we use the, these experts to give us this information, and yet, and now they are, they are not here, and they're not speaking, we're speaking. But I will say there were a lot of points made that count, uh, uh, counter some of the information provided. Uh, one thing is, that it wasn't gonna make any difference. Well, the fact is, if this isn't approved uh, tonight, there uh, will be a decommission of the, of the uh, Metro officers that are involved in the task force, and therefore Metro government would not have any representation uh, with the uh, DEA because they, uh, they, are, they will no longer be able to participate uh, by the federal guidelines of uh, participating in the drug in the DEA task force. Also, uh, these investigations take <clears throat> most of the investigations take months, even years, to uh, to uh, uh, complete. And uh, during all this time, by removing these uh, these officers from this program, it would be detrimental to the prosecution and the investigative uh, source of these, uh, of the cases they're, they're involved with now. The money so, uh, they was talking about, colleague was mentioning, yes, it's around $186,000. This is a pat, this is a grant that's been going on for like 20 years. And uh, this money is used for training, uh, equipment, and most, and a salary, because these, uh, these officers are involved in a lot of these crimes don't, are not worked Monday through Friday, eight to four. So they're, they're really intense investigations, uh, multi-jurisdictional, and it requires a lot of uh, manpower and also time. So, and especially in a time when opioid deaths are at an all-time high, I think the last thing we need to do is to uh, uh, restrict our, our police in providing assistance and actually preventing deaths at a rate that it is occurring in Nashville now. Thank you, or in Tennessee. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunity to talk. Uh, with all due respect to my colleagues who are opposed mm -hmm. to this, uh, and I do have profound respect for them, I want to offer a different perspective on this. I've had some personal involvement in these task forces from my previous life, and uh, Metro's been involved in these task forces for a while, and uh, these task forces target criminals. And uh, I fully support an asset forfeiture program that goes along with these, pro with these investigations because, quite frankly, asset forfeiture hits these guys where it hurts the most, and that's the pocketbook. 
and it's a vital part of these criminal investigations. Uh, I do agree that there are extreme cases of civil asset, asset forfeiture that are problematic. Uh, I bring up stories like uh, uh, one of my friends and landscaping buddies who uh, had a bunch of money taken from him at the airport because he was flying to a state contiguous to New Mexico with cash. Uh, there really wasn't a whole lot of evidence to support what he was going to do with that cash, so it was seized. I don't think that's a proper use of civil asset forfeiture, but this task force is not designed to do this. This task force targets drug dealers, uh, criminals who deal drugs to other people and asset forfeiture as it relates to that. Um, this resolution is not going to stop any kind of forfeitures. It simply will allow us to uh, get our fair share of the money and when we have participated in the investigation. So uh, I, I rise fully in support of this resolution. I would ask you all to do the same. Thank you. Councilor Amina Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Um, I would like to thank my colleague, uh, Councilman O'Connell and Councilman uh, Rosenberg, uh, bringing up the uh, unintended consequences happening in this street, uh, because uh, I do appreciate, uh, same as our, our colleague, uh, uh, Councilman Pooley and Councilmember Pridemore as well, uh, offering the professional opinion. Uh, however, the fact of the matter is, almost all the time, as Councilman Pooley uh, stated, unintended un consequences falls onto colored or, or you know, minority uh, community. And for, for that, I think the practice is happening, we really have to be uh, cognizant of that. So, Yes, it will be a rare occasion, and I have no intention to decommission police officer, but I just want to uh, be aware of these uh, un unintended consequences, and uh, civil forfeiture and asset uh, forfeiture is uh, indeed uh, discriminate uh, minority community. Just want to make aware of that, and for that, uh, I don't know which way I'll be boarding, but I just wanted to make aware, and I just want to thank uh, our colleague uh, bring that attention. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to ask a couple of questions for clarification. Um, I think Mr. Jamison may be the one to answer this, if you'll we'll give, see. give it a go. Um, my understanding is that Resolution 926 is the one that deals with the certification, and that we are not affecting the certification of, the, of our local officers with what we're discussing with 920, can you confirm that? Correct, 920 okay. is the equitable sharing. So this is simply whether that some of the money, 10% or so, comes back to Correct. Nashville. Okay, so I, th I think that's important to understand. Uh, certainly, um, many of us are concerned about um, decreasing the, the incidence of mass incarceration and, and trying to break the school to prison pipeline and, and, and many um, issues that are of great concern that affect the minority populations. Um, it's also, I think, very important um, to be dealing with the opioid epidemic, which this is clearly a part of. So I'm, this is not a cut and dried case. I just want to make sure I understand some of the technicalities. Can you explain the difference between civil forfeiture and criminal forfeiture and which, which of this this affects or when criminal forfeiture happens? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Heck. Um, so this is, this is simply civil forfeiture, which means that the money can be taken whether or not the victim is shown to be, I mean, the perpetrator is shown to be guilty. Is that correct? They can be taken upon the arrest. It's then incumbent upon the federal government to establish by a preponderance of the evidence that the forfeiture is warranted under federal law. The, the concerns by the, the critics of the resolution is that the preponderance of the evidence is a low threshold. It's 50 plus 1 percent. Uh, if you if you concur that the majority of people who's, uh, who suffer arrests tend, um, in most instances, to be on the lower threshold of economic uh, uh, advantages, uh, the difficulty is that they have to hire counsel uh, to, within federal court, beat the federal government in establishing the right to return of their vehicle or, or whatever it may be. Uh, so that's the concern that's been expressed by the civil forfeiture, and the civil forfeiture is civil because it's the preponderance of the evidence 
rather than beyond a reasonable doubt at the criminal forfeiture. Okay, thank you. That's that's more technical than I expected. Sorry. Okay, um, <laughs> it was it was explained in the committee that um, that there is the option for uh, if the police is found to be an error that they could return they could repay the cost of the of the legal counsel was my understanding of Correct. that. Correct. That has okay. occurred. Sorry. Th they had provided uh, statistical information indicating that that has occurred 26 times in a 20-year history. Out of how many seizures, 44 or thousands? Over near a thousand, a yeah. A thousand, okay, that's, that's also useful information. And then uh, another thing that I heard in committee was this is primarily dealing with federal DEA uh, incidences where there are large amounts of drugs coming in this is not the same as, as somebody being stopped at a traffic stop and finding a small amount of marijuana in their right, car. Right, they're not after the, the personal use, they're after the large traffic volumes. And then, as Council Member Pulley said, this is, this is a way to get large sums of cash that actually hurt them, which I, I think is important. Can you, is there a similar program at the local level that, uh, is there another type of forfeiture that happens that is hitting the small people that, is what I'm hearing the great concern is that we need to be turning our attention to, or is this is this it? Is this the only civil no, forfeiture that a, happens? there's a state forfeiture. There's a state legislation on the same topic. This is the federal provision, but there is, is a state enabling version. Thank you. That's helpful. Is that something we will be voting on every year that comes up as another? I don't know that the police department has a separate agreement uh, in conjunction with state authorities. They probably would not, but because federal authorities are by definition outside of the state, that's why we have these agreements with them. And so in voting for this agreement, does this necessarily enable the state forfeitures or they're totally disconnected? Totally different. Okay. I, like Council Member Johnson, I'm not sure where I'm going on this. I think it's a big concern. I, I do think it's important for Nashville not to be uh, motivated by going after funds because they need that as a perverse incentive, but I do think it's important to continue to fight crime. Thank you. Councilman Kendall. Yes. Uh, thank you. I've practiced law in the criminal area for over 35 years, and uh, I have had done some work in the uh, federal system. Most of the forfeitures that you find dealing with uh, small, uh, well, people in the minority community in general is in state court. But there are, um, well, in the state system, I put it like that, and that's where Metro generally is involved. But there are cases, uh, where there are forfeitures without necessarily finding any kind of drugs. You know, if you go to the airport and you got $5,000 in your pocket and you got a one-way ticket, a two-way ticket coming back the next day, they're going to arrest you. If, if, well, if, if you appear to be uh, dealing in drugs, they might not even arrest you. Just take the funds off you. I've had clients where the money was taken, no arrest, but then they have to go to court. I agree with Mr. Jameson. It, it has to be a preponderance of evidence that the government has to prove, but the, the person the money is taken from has to, has to start the proceeding to get the money back. And that becomes costly sometime. And I've run in situations where actually they didn't have any money left to get it back. I had, I had at least two clients, I put it like that over the years, that money was taken from them, a significant amount of money, and they were not in drug dealers. They were not dealing in drugs, but they were in a situation it appeared they had a ticket going somewhere and maybe a couple of days later coming back and to the to the feds it seemed like they were dealing in something illegal so they took the funds and we had to go to court we did get it back but it did cost them i mean you know attorney fees uh just the time involved so it does happen it doesn't happen often i'll put it like that in the state courts on the state system it happens on a regular basis people's cars are taken uh, for having, say, two joints in the car, two, two marijuana cigarettes. Cars taken, they have to go out to the Department of Safety and file a claim, and that put up a $300 bond. Uh, Mr. Leonardo, you know what I'm talking about. Either we have to put it up for them. And uh, then they generally have to pay what is called a contribution to the drug fund <laughs> to get the property back. But that goes on in, in the system, and it does impact minorities in, 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 in a way that's unusual. If you go out there, that's what you'll normally see. There's a lot of minorities, especially African Americans and Hispanics, who, who have been, uh, property has been taken. 
But on a federal level, it's not, not a big, big issue. But it can, I guess, uh, could, Ms. Berkeley, influence people to say, okay, if we're going to get some of this money back, then maybe we'll make an arrest or uh, 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 seize the fund. Councilman O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Just uh, rising again here to, to add some clarity to the mix here. We have another nearby resolution that I believe remained on the consent agenda, uh, 2017-926, that is actually about the uh, authorization of MMPD's participation in the Middle Tennessee Drug Enforcement Task Force. I am intending to support that measure. The equitable sharing can be split off from that and should not affect DEA certification in the least. This is this is in no way a comment on our local police force or their policing approaches. This is a comment on what I view as a, a wrong turn in the way that our Federal Department of Justice is currently pursuing criminal justice and policing efforts. Thank you. Councilman Pardue. I call for the question. Councilman Pardue, you're all that's left. Do you object to the question? All right, we're going to move. We're going to have a vote then, Madam Clerk. If you'll open the machine, I'm pretty sure we're not going to have uni unanimity on this one. We're on the resolution. What's that? Yes, sorry. Councilor Johnson, Councilman Potts. I think that's it. Madam Clerk, if you'll close the machine, tally you up. 16 in favor, 15 against, 4 abstain. Motion carries. Bill RS 2017-946, Virtue and Roberts, approves an application for the 2017 Homeland Security Grant from the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency to Metro Government. Councilor Lee Virtue. Am I on? You're, you're on. Um, I move for approval. Any committee reports? I'm sorry. Budget and finance recommended approval 1440 against. Councilman, uh, Council Lady Roberts, I think. Public safety voted six in favor, zero against. Council Lady Virtue. I move for approval. Councilman Bednang. Yeah, thank you uh, to Councilman Shulman that sent that uh, question. I was, uh, I saw it today, and there was an item on the, on the list of uh, items that were being purchased with this that uh, gave me pause, and so I, I asked for more information. I didn't get it, so I'm asking for a one million deferral so we can get the information, and decide if this is something we really want to purchase or not. There's a motion to defer. Is there a second? Second. It's properly seconded. Uh, Councilor Lee Allen. Just, just checking. This is for an application. Is there a due date on that, or will, the, will this deferral interfere with that? I don't know. Just a moment. Is there anybody from the administration that can answer that question? Is there an application deadline? I don't think there's any. It's unknown. Anyone else seeking recognition? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 Council Lady Vircher approves a grant from the Davidson County Mental Health Court, uh, Mental Health and Veterans Court Assistance Foundation to the Davidson County General Assistance Court Division II to supplement employee salaries and assist in providing direct assistance to veteran, veterans treatment court participants. Council Lady Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance recommended approval 1440 against, and I move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. Council Lady Murphy would like to be recorded as abstaining. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017 Councilman Sledge authorizes GBT Realty. A corporation to construct, install, and maintain an aerial encroachment at 1608 21st Avenue South. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Uh, Councilman Bednay. Sorry, which one? 957. 957. Sorry about that, I was distracted. This uh, legislation uh, uh, was approved for indefinite deferral, 12 4 0 against. Uh, Councilman Elrod. But works recommend indefinite deferral, 10 in favor, 0 against. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I move for indefinite deferral with a brief explanation. Floor is yours. Uh, Council Lady Allen and I have been working with uh, this company regarding the development that's in question. Um, we need to work on the right of way access where this encroachment is going to be installed. And for, so for that, I hope to one day bring it back, but we'll need to have that conversation first. Thanks. There's a motion to defer indefinitely. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RS 2017-962, Weathers, Mina Johnson, and others recognizes November 30th, 2017 as Transgender Day of Remembrance. Uh, Councilman Weathers. I'm sorry. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Could I get committee reports, please? Councilor Haywood. The rules are voted seven to approve and zero against. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. Um, I thank everyone for your uh, attention to this. I know it's been a really, really long meeting tonight. Um, I rise tonight and present a resolution recognized in November 20th, 2017 as Transgender Day of Remembrance. Why remembrance? Because transgender persons have been historically and unfortunately continue to be subjected to a disproportionate amount of discrimination, violence, and especially murder. I know that no one in this body supports violence toward and the murder of our transgender family members and loved ones. Too often when violence or murder has been visited upon transgender persons, press and media accounts have either blamed the victim of the violence or have misgendered the individuals and sought to erase the identity in which those persons live as their authentic selves. Transgender persons are our brothers and sisters, parents, children, and in some cases even our clergy. Certainly these individuals are worth remembering. But transgender individuals and persons are also achieving great things and contributing to our country, our society, and our community that are also worth celebrating. Transgender persons are serving currently in our military protecting our country. Transgender persons are serving uh, some of our municipalities and state legislatures and just, just tonight, for example, in the state of Virginia, Danica Rome was elected to the Virginia state legislature as a challenger to the very person who had been, uh, who had been in the legislature and introduced divisive, hurtful bathroom bills in that state. And that individual is now replaced by a transgender citizen who will be able to offer perspectives about uh, safety. Danica Rome is actually the second transgender person elected to a state legislature in the United States. Here in Tennessee, uh, and specifically here in Nashville, we have a transgender individual, Dr. Marisa Richmond, who's in the audience tonight, who was confirmed by this body to serve on the Metro Human Relations Commission, and who also has the uh, distinct achievement of being recently elected to the Democratic National Committee. As a cisgender white gay male, I will never face the kinds of discrimination that a transgender person will face, and that's especially true if it's a transgender person of color. On behalf of my transgender brothers and sisters, I ask this body to support this resolution which recognizes Transgender Day of Remembrance, and I will reserve any additional time to respond to any questions or concerns of my colleagues. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Councilman Glover would be marked, like to be marked as a, and let's go to the machine. Madam Clark, if you don't the machine. He closes machine tally vote. 31 in favor, one against, two abstain. Motion carries. That brings us to bills on introduction and first reading. Without objection, we'll take all bills on introduction and first reading together. Is an objection? Yes. Uh, hit, hit your buttons, guys, if you got an objection. 
Um, yeah, that could be a me problem. I'm sorry. Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Pursuant to Rule 8, I ask that uh, Bill 2017-950 be deferred one meeting. Yes, thank you. Sorry. 950? I believe that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Pursuant to Rule 8. Can Mr. Jameson, what does Rule 8 say? Rule 8 provides that any resolution, uh, in, in relevant part, any resolution or proposed ordinance on first reading, the subject matter of which affects only one district, shall be deferred one meeting if the council member from the district concerned with the subject matter of such legislation has not introduced or co-sponsored such legislation. Bill 2017-950 is deferred by rule. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to pull BL 2017-951 from consent. Okay. Any others? Seeing no one else seeking recognition, with the exceptions of uh, 950 and 951, is there a motion to approve bills on introduction and first reading? There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to BL 2017-951, Councilman Scott Davis, an ordinance amending uh, Chapter 2.44 of the Metropolitan Code of Laws to establish a community oversight board responsible for providing citizen oversight over officers of the Metro Nashville Police Department in certain instances. Councilman Scott Davis. Thank you, Vice Mayor. This is probably the hardest piece of legislation I've ever had to draft or work with. I'm gonna ask to pass this on first reading because we need to show a commitment for change in our community. More importantly also, I'm gonna ask for a, I wanna ask for a deferral after the passage to the, f to the first meeting in January. Now, initially I said I would defer it two meetings. Um, this would be deferring it three meetings, maybe four. The reason why I'm asking is A, give time for the task force to get together and propose amendments. And third, I wanna have a public hearing in January. January is very important. You have Martin Luther King's birthday and you're entering Black History Month. And doing that will give time for the task force to get, get amendments down. And also it will give time for more community input and give us time in maybe late January to early February, bringing a close to perfect CLB agreement, you know, to the citizens of Nashville. And, I'm, and once again, if it's unclear, Mr. Jamison, I will repeat myself, I would like to have to pass this on first reading to show Nashville residents that we care about them and that we care about everybody's safety, you know, when it comes to that small minority of police officers who may abuse their authority. After that, I'd like for it to be, you know, the second reading to be a public hearing, the first meeting in January, if that makes sense. I'm requesting, I know we don't usually make, we do a public hearing uh, for an ordinance that only takes um, two readings, um, but I would like there to be a public hearing and also the com sort of community can give feedback on what the task force has decided. And if I could, this may be a little bit unorthodox, if I can't do it, I apologize, Vice Mayor. I would like for this to go to the um, next um, public safety meeting, even though it's n it just passes on first reading, I do want to hear the conversation and the feedback from my colleagues throughout um, this, this process of this particular bill. And I want to give the chance for the community and the task force that will comprise of members of this body, folks from the mayor's office, folks from law enforcement, more importantly, it'll be members from the community, from the activist community, from the churches, just from our normal neighborhoods to be involved in the process. So. I'm asking for this passage on first reading, just to show our commitment to making sure we get this correct um, for our citizens here in Nashville. There's a motion to adopt on first reading and defer 
second reading to the first meeting in January. Uh, Councilman, in terms of your the request for public hearing and for um, to be referred to the Public Safety Committee, um, uh, Council Lady Mary, Mary Carolyn Roberts, would you agree to work with Councilman Davis in that regard? I think that would be great. I think that would be very helpful if we work together. Thank you. So we'll we'll uh, we'll leave it to that for y'all to work out the details of a public hearing and a re referral or early referral if necessary to that committee. Is that acceptable, Councilman? Yes, sir. Okay. Councilman Pulley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, I want to state that uh, first of all, I appreciate the hard work of my friend and colleague, Councilman Davis, and other council members on this issue. Uh, and the passion with which they have approached this endeavor. I also appreciate the beginning of a very important conversation around an issue that sparks great passion among many in our community, the conversation we must have. I've personally been involved in discussions with several of my good friends in groups advocating for this bill and my friends on the police department in an effort to facilitate a substantive di discussion around this issue which affords our community and all parties a seat at that table. It's very important that this discussion is advanced and all perspectives are heard. It's extremely important that this be done right and there is not a perception that we are in any way rushing this. It is my understanding that there may be some issue with the filing of this bill relative to Rule 16. Moving forward, I would personally love to be a part of these discussions as we advance reasonable discussion around this very important issue. In an effort to advance a clean bill and move this conversation along, I would like to offer an amendment to Councilman Davis's motion to defer first reading of this bill two meetings to our first December meeting so that we could advance, advance this bill and do it in a way that allows us to unpack some very important yet controversial issues and begin to reach the kind of consensus necessary for this to be successful. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Is there a second? Second, second. Councilor Amini Johnson. Councilor Amini Johnson, we're just gonna go down the list here, guys. You guys can talk <laughs> on first reading. <laughs> just a reminder on first reading. Second reading, normally we have committee meetings, right? You know, roll on, roll Thank on. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, I rise in support for Councilman Scott Davis as motion to pass and fast reading and then defer to January. So that will keep our ball rolling and we will have lots of opportunity for both stakeholders, everybody's concerned to have on the table. I personally attended uh, uh, this presentation by group and it's misconception of uh, law enforcement unfriendly bill. It is not. I think it will uh, advance everybody and it will give fair a presentation for law enforcement and the community as well. So I think by having, uh, starting those conversations, we can have better understanding of why this uh, board is proposed and so forth. So for that, I uh, support uh, Councilman Scott Davis' uh, motion to approve a first reading tonight and then defer to January meeting. Councilor Lee Hart. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I just stand uh, in support as well. We've heard all night about transparency and inclusion. This is a great first step to show our intentionality about being inclusive for all people. This is just a matter of quality control, checks and balances, and accountability. So I encourage support of this resolution, this bill. Thank you. Councilman Primor. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I, I, I really respect what you were trying to say, and I, and I agree with you, but with the, with the motion to defer, 
Uh, I agree with uh, Councilman Davis, and we've discussed this, and I've also had discussions with uh, uh, other, other entities, uh, law enforcement and, and others, and I agree with them that I have no problem with transparency, but there, in transparency, we'll say there are a lot of problems, legal issues with this bill, and here we are going to advance something on first reading that will not stand up in a court of law uh, for various reasons, and it's been, and it's been um, uh, uh, pointed out. So why not defer it, uh, get a, a good bill written up, and then move that forward? I don't have a problem, but this right here is got, it's going to be shot. It's going to be full of holes. So uh, I agree. I think we need to be working. With the parties need to be working with one another, the police and then uh, uh, Councilman Davis, and, and have these uh, discussions. But I want, as everyone else does, a good, clean bill that people will cl clearly understand, and we won't have to come back, go back after uh, the first reading at our next meeting, and then say, now we defer it. Let's just defer it now. Same, the end result's the same. Thank you. Mr. Jameson, do you write uh, analysis on um, bills before they um, are adopted on first reading? No, I do not. I leave it. My unlicensed. My, my screen is not working. I asked, I asked the question of Mr. Jameson of whether he writes an analysis of a bill before it is adopted on second reading. Not to suggest Mr. Pridemore is wrong, but to point out that we might not know if the bill is legal or not until it reaches second reading. Council Lady Murphy. Um, Mr. Jameson, if this goes to, so if we pass this tonight, and we are at second reading, it can only be amended on second reading, is that correct, not on third? Barring a suspension of the rules, it would typically be amended on second reading. What I'm concerned about tonight is that I've heard a lot of conflicting information about who was at the table to draft this legislation, who, which sides were consulted, were not consulted, what the plans were tonight to defer, to not defer, to indefinitely defer in December and things like that. And I, I don't want to rush this. This is a, an important topic for all of us, and I'm concerned that, that we may have rushed it, and I don't want us to get it wrong, and I don't want us to be in the position where we have to defer again or have multiple amendments or conflicting amendments the way we've seen with the short-term rental um, legislation. And so I'll just tell you all tonight, like, I'm, I'm, I'm torn on what we need to do here. I've heard from both sides. Um, and it seems like a lot of communication needs to still happen. So um, I will, unfortunately, Vice Mayor, continue to listen to the debate of my colleagues, but I just, I, I have some of those concerns tonight on, on whether we've, how we've gotten here and, and what our steps forward are. So. Councilman Mendez. Sorry to ask this clarifying question, but the motion that's pending is Mr. Davis's motion. No, the motion to pe the motion pending is to defer um, first reading to the second meeting in December. All right, um, I, I'm opposed to deferring that, um, and uh, I apologize on behalf of all of us that we're belaboring this. Um, the idea of deferring to get it right. Um, is frankly uh, ridiculous. Um, we just the last meeting we had. Um, the, the last meeting we had, Councilman Shulman filed something that he openly acknowledged was a meaningless placeholder for short-term rentals, and we didn't bog that down on first reading to make sure to get some substance to it. We pass things on first reading so we can get it to second reading. There's a commitment from the sponsor to have there be further conversation about this. We should take him at his word and pass this on first reading. I know your passions are high, but we really don't applaud in here unless you want to hear the gavel, and I don't like hitting it very much. So I will point out that Councilman Davis's motion would move second reading later than Councilman Pulley's motion would result in second reading occurring. So I don't mean to overdetermine this, guys, but 
This is first reading. We take first reading all bills together at once normally. You're not, Councilman Scott Davis, you're up next. I, I would like to move to table the deferment with a brief explanation. Floor's yours, go ahead. I don't know if we remember months ago when a large group of our citizens came in here and asked for justice for their son. I don't know if we remember the countless NOAA meetings and people are saying there's been no communication. I guess people aren't paying attention to what's happening outside. I guess they're not paying attention to what's happening all over our nation. And forgive me for going to partisan politics, but some of you who call yourself Democrats, and then you, and then you push, and you, then you defer, that you want to defer, and then when it's time to finally do what people are asking, let it go to first reading. This is not a zoning bill. This is not Airbnb. This is not any of that other stuff. But we were fine with, let's do a first read. Let's get to first base. You know, this is all that we're asking. And to see people here that grew up in the city with me, who are, being, who are a little bit younger than me, and also at times who claim to be more progressive than I am, to look at these people's faces here and look into the nation out there and look at everybody and say, oh my goodness, we need a way. No one knows about this. No one tried to talk to me about this. We've been screaming out there for years in this community. I mean, I'm sorry. It's not politically correct and I apologize, but dang it, something's gotta happen. I've been falsely arrested before. I've been racially profiled, you know, growing up here in Nashville. And I've seen my friends that we make excuses all the time. We've agreed we're going to help form this task force. We're going to have a public hearing. And I am just sick of us when it comes time to address certain tough issues that we're like, oh, let's put it off. Let's put it off. My colleagues, let it go of first reading. You know, let, these, let us know that there is some hope out there. You know, we want the police's input. We know we're not trying to rush things, but we have to look at the issues. You know, economically, socially, you know, you have a community out there that is, that is close to burning down. And the problem is, you know, they don't feel listened to. And people say they've been ignored. You know, we didn't hear anything. So I guess all these meaning Noah's and the commitment you know, from a lot of our leaders and things that are going on, you know, I guess we don't care anymore. But I want to let people know that, and especially I appreciate the input from the gentleman from West Nashville and all our great law enforcement. As I say again, if the police were more, if those bad police officers were more like you two wonderful gentlemen, we wouldn't have these issues here. You know, and I say that a lot because you, because most of you are great, you know, but when you have that one bad experience with one bad officer, it ruins your life. And I just want to let you know that, you know what I mean? If I don't get anything else done in this chamber for my next two years, I feel out of all the zoning and everything, this is probably the most important piece ever. You know what I mean? It's to ensure the safety of women, African-Americans, Hispanics, and other groups that get targeted by that 1% of terrible law enforcement. Even though we have 99% of our officers are great, when I was abused by officer, the chief came to my rescue, and that officer was disciplined. But it's not as anti-law enforcement. Because like I said, 99% of our police officers are great in this city, but it's that 1% that can shatter our lives. You know, many, many of you know about that incident, and I won't go into details, but table the amendment. Let's get the first read, and let's have the hard conversation. Thank you. Councilman Foley. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd move approval of my request to amend the motion by Councilman Davis. All in favor of the motion to table, say aye. aye. Opposed? 
Motion carries. We're back on, we're now back on Councilman Davis's motion to approve on first meeting and defer first, second reading to the first meeting in January. Councilman Elrod. Move for his previous question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. There's a motion to approve on first reading and defer second reading to the first meeting in January. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That was first reading, so I'm going to go on the voice vote. Uh, that brings us to bills on second reading, BL 2017-688, Blaylock and Swope amends the Metro Code to permit construction of a use of electri electric fences pursuant to, to certain standards. This, this bill is deferred by rule because it's been more than 100, more than 90 days since it was last on our agenda, BL 2017-912, Shulman amends the Metro Code to require the Metro Social Services Commission to open a Metro operated facility at night to permit to people in Nashville when temperatures in Nashville, in Nashville reach 32 degrees Fahrenheit or below. Councilman Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Council A. Vircher. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, budget and Finance recommended approval and a re-referral back to Budget and Finance 10-4, ten for ten four, four against. Council A. Gilmore. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Health hospitals and social services recommended a uh, approval and a re-referral as well. And I just wanted to make a brief comment if I could. Sure. Um, so I just wanted to uh, really thank our committee. We have a really good committee in uh, health uh, and hospitals. And additionally, I wanted to thank Council Member Schulman. And I, I thanked him during that time in the committee room. But I wanted to acknowledge him again and the work that uh, he and Judith and Renee are doing and how they are coming together for the good of the city to focus on how to solve this big issue. So I just wanted to acknowledge that and thank you for your hard work in working with the departments publicly. And I, I look forward to it coming back before the committee for discussion. Thanks, Mr. Schulman. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, and thank you for that comment. Uh, we do see some real progress going on. Uh, people are working together, um, and we're gonna give them some time to work that out. So I would move to defer one meeting. Is this with a re-referral to budget and finance? Uh, yeah, with a re-referral back to budget and finance and back to health and hospitals. All right. Okay. There's a motion to defer one meeting and re-refer to both committees. Is properly seconded. All in favor? <laughs> on this one. <laughs> Are you voting no on this, Councilman Glover? No. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 939, Mendez, Virtue, and others amends the Metro Code to add a new section regarding approval of transit improvement programs. Councilman Mendez. Committee reports, please. Council Lee Virtue. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Budget and Finance rec approval 1540 again. Councilman Hager. Oh. Traffic and parking approved 4 to 0. Councilman Mendez. Motion approved with a brief explanation. Closures. So the IMPROVE Act passed by the state of Tennessee last year said that we could put items on a referendum uh, uh, for a transit plan either by resolution or ordinance. This ordinance just simply has us saying we're gonna do it by ordinance. Um, and there's two reasons why that's a good idea. One is that we get the three readings to make sure that we've got time uh, to hear it out rather than just a one-shot resolution. And the second reason is, as you all know, with ordinances, we are required to have 21 votes to pass this. And if we're gonna put a $5.2 billion item on the referendum, I think we should hold ourselves to the higher standard of a um, 21 votes as opposed to a simple majority. Um, the administration hasn't voiced any opposition to this, um, urge you to, to vote in favor of it. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-940, Council Lady Wiener, Council Lady Hurt, amends the Metro Code to redact references to Richland Village, the McKay Home, and the Municipal Children's Home, Council Lady Hurt. Committee report, please. Council Lady Haywood. Yes, uh, the Rules Committee voted seven to approve and zero against. Council Lady Hurt. Move for approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 941. Council Lady Allen um, amends the Metro Code to establish a commercial parking permit program. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Hager. Uh, parking and traffic at the request of the sponsor. 
uh, move forward to zero to defer to the second meeting in December. Councilor Young. Move to defer until the second meeting in December. Motion to defer to the second meeting in December, properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-942, Syracuse Virtue and Elrod, authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes, for purposes of the fairway drive sidewalk improvements. Councilman Syracuse. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Lady Virtue. Budget and Finance recommended approval 15-4-0 against. Councilman Bedning. Which one is this one? 942. Okay, let me look for it. 942. That, that was recommended for approval. 12 4 zero against. You sound surprised. Councilman Syracuse. Uh, public Works. We already get Public Works. I'm sorry, Councilman Aron. Public Works, I'm really sure. But recommend approval 10 in favor, 0 against. There you go, Councilman Syracuse. Uh, move approval. Thank you. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 943, Council Lady Van Rees, Virtue, and Elrod authorizes the acquisition of right of way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes of the Maplewood Trace sidewalk project. Council Lady Van Rees. Committee reports, please. Council Lady Virtue. Budget and Finance recommended approval 15 4 0 against. Councilman Bedney. It, it was also recommended for approval 12 4 0 against. Councilman Elrod. 10 in favor, 0 against. Council Lady Van Rees. Uh, I really think it's important to build a sidewalk from a high school to a Wendy's, and so with that, I ask your approval. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed, motion carries. Bill 2017-944, Council Lady Mina, Von, Mina Johnson, Virtue, and Elrod authorizes the acquisition of right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes of the Davidson Road multi-use path project. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Committee report, please. Council Lady Virtue. Budget and finance recommended approval 15-4-0 against. Councilman Bedney. This one was recommended for approval as well. 12 4 0 against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommended approval. 10 in favor, 0 against. Council Lady Johnson. Thank you, Vice Mayor. I would like to move for approval with a teeny bitty comment. <laughs> Not likely. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, uh, this is a very fast sidewalk project in my district. It has been, we uh, district have been waiting uh, 12 years to advance in this stage. So one more reading, so please approve. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-947, Councilman O'Connell abandons a portion of Junior Gilliam Way and alley number 205 right away in Eastman. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to request committee reports, please. Councilman Bedney. This one was recommended for approval 12 4 0 against. Councilman Elrod. Public Works recommend approval 10 in favor, 0 against. Uh, Councilman, Councilman Hager. <laughs> Fabian Parking approved, 4 4 0 against. Councilman O'Connell. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval. Motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017 819, Councilman Kendall, Councilman Lady Allen changes 0.49 acres from ORI to SP zoning for properties located at 109, 111, 113, 29th Avenue North to permit a hotel. Councilman Kendall. Uh, committee report. Uh, Councilman Bedday. Yeah, the committee recommended defer for one meeting and re-refer to the uh, planning committee. Councilman Kendall. I want to move to defer one meeting uh, with a brief comment. Fleshers. As you recall, there were several people here at the uh, public hearing who were opposed to this and they gave various reasons. Uh, we've had several meetings since. Uh, had a meeting at the other day with um, Brandon Burnett, the uh, attorneys for uh, some of the people who are in opposition and the developers and uh, we've we're going to uh, present a substitute which is in great detail uh, regarding this uh, project this SP probably uh, more detailed than we need but it involves parking uh, on-site parking off-site parking parking uh, during the construction parking after the construction height of the building, all the safety issues, all of those are going to be included in this SP. So I'm, I'm glad to say I think we've resolved this issue, and uh, Councilman Sean Henry says his client is withdrawing her objection. Thank you. 
There's a motion to defer one meeting. I believe we referral to planning and zoning, Councilman Kendall. There's a motion to defer and re-refer. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. BL 2017-852, Council Lady Roberts. Expands 1,591.06 acres um, of the Urban Zoning Overlay District to various properties located between Cabot Drive and Briley Parkway from Knob Road North to Annex Avenue. Council Lady Roberts. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. Committee reports, please. Councilman Bidnay. The committee uh, was presented a substitute. Should she move the substitute first? Uh, let's get committee. Let's go ahead and give the committee report. It's fine. So the substitute was recommended for approval, 1240 against, and and then it was a, the substitute. The approved substitute was also recommended for approval, 1240 against. Thank you, sir. Councilor Lady Roberts. I'd like to move for approval of the substitute with a brief explanation. There's a motion to substitute. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? You're on your bill as substituted. This took so many months, and really I want to extend a huge thank you to the Planning Commission for all their help with this, but particularly to Brandon Burnett, who put in countless hours on this and went out of his way and went above and beyond. And that was really something that half of my district was not under the sidewalk law that Councilman Henderson put into effect July 1st, and now they are because of this. And I know that it was a hard undertaking, but I, I really, really appreciate all, all of your help. Thanks. There's a motion to approve the bill as substituted. It is properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-871, Glover Virtue and others authorizes the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for purposes of the central park improvements and upon acquisition the conveyances of said easements to the state of Tennessee, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Move approval. There's a motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-872, Glover, Virtue, and others authorized the acquisition of certain right-of-way easements, drainage easements, temporary construction easements, and property rights for the purposes of the Andrew Jackson Parkway State, I'm sorry, Andrew Jackson Parkway Sidewalk Improvements, Councilman Glover. Move approval. It's motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017 892, Councilman Kendall changes um, from RS5 to R6A zoning for property located at 1015 44th Avenue North. Councilman Kendall. Made a report, please. Councilman Bednay. Uh, 892. Thank you, sir. I don't have it. Okay. We already have that committee report. My apologies. Right. Councilman approve. Kendall. Move approval. This motion to approve is properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-908, Councilman Leonardo, amends the Metro Code pertaining to the Department of Water and Sewer Services. Councilman Leonardo. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. I'd like to move approval with a brief comment. Floor is yours. I'd just like to thank, uh, I want to thank Brandon and I also want to thank Carrie and Mr. Jamison and Doug Sloan uh, for you know, helping me work this, through this project for the last year. It's been a big deal, so I appreciate all your efforts and uh, move approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-913, Councilman Withers. Abandons existing sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrants, and easements, and accepts new sanitary sewer and water mains, sanitary sewer manholes, fire hydrants, and any associated easements for property located at 620 South 9th Street and 804 Sylvan Street. Councilman Withers. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor. With all committee reports being in uh, and being approved, I would like to request approval. Motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-914, Kendall, Elrod, and Allen. Abandons a portion of 4th Avenue North right-of-way. Councilman Kendall. Yes. Uh, with all committee reports in, I would move approval. The motion to approve. It's properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Bill 2017-915, Councilman Sledge. Elrod and Allen abandons a portion of Lester Avenue, right of way, Councilman Sledge. Thank you, Mr. Vice Mayor, we have approval. This motion approved, it's properly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Before we adjourn tonight, um, 
I did go by the office today at around 10, and neither Mr. Jameson nor Ms. Zeitlin were there. I expected that they would be both be reprimanded and have their pay cut. However, I did learn that Ms. Zeitlin was accompanied by Mr. Jameson to be sworn into the bar of the state of great state of Tennessee today. So although her pay will not be cut, she is now due for a life of misery as a lawyer. <laughs> is there a motion? Council Lady Hurt. I'm sorry? And we do have Council Lady Karen Johnson here who uh, is turning 21 again. So <laughs> congratulations, Council Lady Karen Johnson. Is there a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Oppose, you're adjourned. This has been a service of the Metro National Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.